when we say paradise, what are we really talking about? A beach, a hotel, or the sun, or maybe the Caribbean. In case you don't know it already, Paradise Beach Hotel is a lot more than that. It's about a great food selection and exotic cocktails. It's dancing to the sounds of the night. And it's also waking up to the sounds of the morning. And suddenly realizing you've been a morning person all along. Because in paradise, you're free to be whoever you were born to be. And move the way you were meant to move. If it all sounds way too perfect, it's only because paradise usually is. You know that feeling you get when you go out and breathe your first outdoor breath? It's filled with that fuel only a garden surrounded environment can give you. And you see just how comfortable tropical paradise can really be. Well, that's what paradise is all about. Spaces, magic, fun, details. Most importantly, it's about feeling at home. In other words, coming to paradise where it's all about you. Double K is a manufacturer of premium diving equipment in Korea, a vibrant and creative country. At Double K, we focus on constant research to develop innovative and comfortable products to enhance the experience of diving for our customers. We take pride in our cutting edge and stylish designs, providing a sleek yet professional look whether you're in or out of the water. From wetsuits to fins, masks to equalization tools, Double K has all the free diving accessories you will need. Fall in love with your diving with Double K. Inspired by the ocean. Location, speed, direction, altitude, atmosphere. Mission two is more than a watch. It follows you wherever you go. On the journey to ageless energy. We won't fear the unknown challenges. We won't hold back our curiosity. Your pulse, your tracks, your wake, the direction and achievement in your life. Distance and breath. Merging with the ocean flow. Our sweat cleansed in the currents. gets darker as we descend deeper. But your light will shine through the depth. A variety of color options. Each mission, too, embodies your personality.
Good morning, everybody. My name is Brandon. I'm a freediving instructor and breath training coach, and I am here at the 29th Ada Deputable Championships here in sunny Roatan, Honduras. <sighs> We've made it. We've done it. It's the last day of the competition. Eight days in a row of streaming, diving, watching people do amazing things. And we are finishing off with the men's constant weight day. We have some pretty beefy dives coming up today. We have a four-way tie uh, for fifth place at the moment if everybody's dives go well. Um, with announced dive depths of 101 meters. Uh, that is uh, what fifth place has, has announced. Um, we'll go over that in a second. Uh, conditions here on the surface. I, do, do you guys really want me to say it? Because you know what it is. It's, it's beautiful. It's beautiful as always. Uh, water's 28 degrees, no thermocline, no current. A little bit, a very little bit of movement on the surface, uh, which is something that we haven't really seen uh, unless there's a boat passing by. Uh, sunny, very wispy clouds in the sky, as you can see behind me right here. Look at that, look at that good stuff. Yeah, no, it's amazing. Beautiful day for diving. Can't wait to see what the divers are doing. Uh, yeah, visibility is like 35 meters, 40 meters. Insane. Love to see it. Cool. We'll take a quick look at the uh, start list for today. Uh, starting off with Miro Swampera, who's going to be doing a 55 meter dive. Uh, yes, yeah, as we can see, a bunch of 101 meter dives, 102 meters, 105 meters. 116 from Abdelatif Alawash of France, and 117 from Walid Boudiaf of Tunisia. Uh, and then 105 from Jeku from Chinese Taipei. So those three, if all goes well, should round out the top three for today. Uh, but as we all know, things sometimes happen, sometimes red cards, sometimes yellow cards. So we'll be watching and enjoying today. Ten. Our diver on the line is Muriel Sunopera, representing Finland. The announced performance is 55 meters. Dive time is 1 minute 50. One, five, zero. Okay, so we are watching the monofin technique here. Uh, the monofin technique uh, is different <laughs> from uh, constant weight bifins where you are finning from the legs. Uh, the movement begins in your abdominals. Um, now, Mido has started his dive with his arms at his sides. Um, you can still definitely do monofin technique like this, um, but it's not as efficient, uh, partially because of where the center of mass of your body is when your arms seconds. are down. If your arms are down, you can sort of see the middle point of his body is his hips. Um, if you put your arms above your head, that position moves to being over your belly button your, and your abdominals. When we are generating power, uh, generally we want to be uh, having the center of mass be where that power begins its generation point. Um, so as we can sort of see here, Miro is using his legs much more than his abs, um, which is fine, um, you can definitely do so, but now as we watch, we can see that the movement has shifted from starting at his abdomen uh, much more, and he's able to generate more power because you're recruiting more muscles um, in the abdominals uh, as you fin and kick up. Grabbing up nice and high on the line, keeping his airways out of the water. Divers need to give a clean surface protocol, uh, which consists of removing all facial equipment, giving an okay sign to the judges, and then saying, I'm okay. Uh, he's done that, he has a tag, so this should be a white card for Finland. Mito has had a very long competition, so he should be very happy to <laughs> be done. That is a white card for Miro. Miro, the apnea boy. Well done. Uh, something to note uh, is that Miro has been going basically at the end of the day. Uh, I think each day that he's competed, 
Uh, and this is definitely very different from basically being the first diver of the day. Um, being a, a later diver, uh, going at around noon, means that you can have a small breakfast, means that you can have a very chill and relaxing morning, uh, means that you have time just kind of to chill, uh, or in some cases, uh, worry. <laughs> uh, so uh, it's interesting to be interesting to see and, and talk with him about how uh, he feels about going from three days of starting at the uh, as one of the last divers to being the first. Uh, you can also take a look at the start times. We have slightly longer start times. Uh, generally, it's been every 10 minutes we have a new diver starting. Uh, today, we have, uh, up until the break, we have 12-minute uh, time slots. Uh, so every 12 minutes, uh, we have a new diver go. Uh, that is partially because of the depths that they're going to. We want to make sure that our safeties are uh, fully rusted and recovered, their surface intervals are being respected, uh, and they are you know, ready to jump in and support another diver if necessary. Uh, it also means that if there's an issue that happens, uh, we have the ability to uh, sort of keep things moving along uh, from a medical standpoint to make sure that there's no uh, kerfuffle happening on the platform. Hello. Uh, there's no, there's nothing happening that's really big on the platform, uh, so we can just sort of keep things going and moving along very smoothly. Uh, that also means that we have even more time to answer questions today. Uh, so if you guys do have any questions, please do feel free to post them in the YouTube chat. I am in there, I am opening the live stream link, uh, and I will answer any questions that you guys might have about today, about the divers, about the competition as a whole. Yes, absolutely. Cool. Where did that link go? There it is. Cool. Ba -ba -da -ba -ba. Uh, hi, Fotocopias Universidad. Uh, hi, Sophine. Good to see you again. The apnea boy did it. Tommy passing in in the chat. Tommy will be diving later on today. He's announced a 70 meter dive, uh, so we're looking forward to seeing you dive, Tommy. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, if you guys. Oh, hey, Jonathan. How's it going? Good to see you. Uh, if you guys could, I'd be very interested in hearing what your favorite or like most standout part of this competition has been so far for you. Um, I know there have been quite a few uh, nail biter moments, there have been some fun moments, there have been some sad moments. Uh, so let me know in the chat what you guys, uh, what's stuck out to you so far? I'd love to hear. Uh, let's see. Uh, CLB2C4E says, uh, Hi Brandon, why does the dive order usually go from middle low de dive depths uh, to deepest then decreasing again? That's a good question. So part of the reason why we go from shallow to deep and then back to shallow again is in order to allow the safeties to have ample time to warm up. Um, <clears throat> In the past, we generally see that the first maybe five or six dives are fairly shallow. Um, they go from, you know, 40 to 60, and then we go up to the deepest dives, and then we go back down again. Uh, we don't really want to uh, drop our safeties directly into a you know, 117 meter dive. <laughs> uh, that's pretty rough to have to safety. Um, Everything we do is based around the safety of the athletes, and this is one of the ways that we help keep them safe, is by making sure that our, uh, our safeties are warmed up, uh, making sure that the medical staff are all situated, they've um, had the opportunity to get all their stuff ready, get into the mindset as well. That's also why we have an opener. Um, an opener is somebody who dives, who is not actually competing for any points on that day, but is more to sort of make sure that the judges, the safeties, the medical staff, everybody, even to dive eye, we're all, everything is working correctly. It's basically a dry run of the day. Um, then from there we have our more shallow ones, the safeties get really warmed up, we have our deep ones, and then as we go towards the end of the day, after the safeties are starting to get a little tired, we then decrease the depths again and again and again until eventually we end on shallow dives. Yeah, that's, that's that.
very nice. Okay, let me pull out my notes here, and we can talk a little bit about our next diver, Nicolas Chiquin of France. Announced 100 meters. Uh, he placed third overall in free immersion the other day with a 101 meter dive, uh, and is here with his coach, Christian Maldam, who will be joining us later on in the day uh, after Eddie dives. Uh, to comment and uh, watch the uh, the potential podium spots go. Uh, Nicholas lives in Corsica uh, and has a personal best of uh, in constant weight of 95 meters. So this is five meters deeper than his personal best. Uh, as I've said a few times, uh, there is a, a limit to what the divers are allowed to announce beyond their personal best. Uh, they can announce anything up to five meters past it. So for Nicholas, he, his personal best is 95, he's announced 100, and that's the deepest that he could announce for this discipline. Um, I've gotten questions about how that's sort of regulated. Uh, when a diver comes to a competition, they are required to write down their personal bests for the judges. Those are kept secret. Uh, but they also need to be signed off on by a witness. So somebody who knows that you have done that depth, that that is your personal best, that you've done it safely, you haven't hurt yourself on it. Um, and then again, that's just another safety thing that we follow to keep our athletes safe. We don't want them to pushing too deep, too fast, too beyond their, their comfort, uh, just because they're here at a world championship and they're trying to get points. Okay, let's see. How many dives do the safety divers make? Uh, they, let's see, there are, there are a few teams that sort of rotate through the day. Um, <clears throat> so generally, let's see. They are doing, okay, well it sort of depends because, so there's a team of divers who are supporting the athletes who are diving at the time for their attempt. Then there are also safeties who are on the warm-up buoys uh, diving with the divers to make sure that they're safe uh, as they warm up. Uh, so we have, I believe, 10 safeties total. Uh, and over the course of the day, they're doing anywhere from 20 to maybe 30 drops, uh, depending on how many people are using the warm up lines, that sort of stuff. Um, and then we have different positions for each diver. Uh, there's a deep safety who's using the uh, scooter, which we will see on Nicholas's dive. The scooter is employed on dives 80 meters or deeper. Uh, then there's a uh, primary safety and a secondary safety, and then there's a safety on the surface. So on really deep dives, there are four safety divers per one athlete, and on more shallow dives, one shallower minute. than 80 meters, uh, there are three safety divers. Uh, and Carolina asks, how is the safety crew being selected? Is there any tender? Uh, part of it is proximity to where the competition is. Uh, a lot of the divers here, a lot of the safety divers are locals. Um, they work with Roatan Freediving. <clears throat> they are instructors themselves. Uh, and then uh, Chris McKay of um, Freedive Tulum is here as the uh, chief safety and, and works with them, runs drills with them, trains them up uh, even more uh, to make sure that they're firing on all cylinders for the competition. Nicholas would like to shout five, out to his parents. Six, seven, uh, eight, <laughs> Nine, who are nine, very supportive of him, who assist him, uh, and have encouraged him to follow his freediving dreams, uh, to his coach Abdel, who will be watching dive later on, uh, to his friends, to his fellow training partners at the Abnia Club, Ajassian, uh, for his colleagues at the airline he works for, to the Ada French team, of course, and to all of the athletes that he has 
Uh, he has had the great opportunity to uh, meet and dive with over the past two years, with a special thanks to Jennifer Venland. 30 seconds. 30, down. There's also somebody else uh, that he noted that would know who they were 40, down. when I mentioned this. 45 seconds. Okay, we see a really beautiful streamline position here from Douglas. We see the slight bend in the knees. We see his cheeks are puffed up for the mouth fill, which he's using to equalize past residual volume. Very little movement overall. This is also showing how pristine the conditions are. There's no current at all. He's just able to completely drop. Down. Something that you can notice as well, uh, just for funsies, uh, is that all of the red uh, on him and in the camera has gone away, except for the graphic on the screen. Whoop. Stand down. Coming up. Grabbing a tag. Coming up, yes. 145. And coming up. 90 up! Uh, as he comes up, look for any red on his... I believe he has some red on his neck weight. 80 we can look up! For and watch that color come Two back. Minutes. Uh, in his technique, we see that uh, his arms are nice ahead of him. Up. Uh, his head is pinched between his biceps. Uh, and we can see that the movement is being generated from his abdominals again. 60 up! Um, basically moving the hips forward and backwards and rotating them around um, up. around the abs. He has very small up. amplitude on his Diver kicks. Definitely getting a little tired now. 30 up. Uh, 100 meters is a long way to kick up from, but he looks to be doing okay. 20 up. And this is the last part of the dive where we have to, uh, the safeties have to be very cognizant of the diver and their uh, hypoxic state. Grabbing up nice and high. Breathing. Okay. Very nice recovery. You notice that he took more than his the usual three recovery breaths that we do see. Um, in a dive like that, in a competition like this, uh, it's totally good to do that. <laughs> Um, these, these divers are definitely pushing within their final limits. Nicholas, beautiful job. Making it look easy. Um, these divers are very much pushing to that hypoxic limit where not only are they sitting with a lot of CO2 and a lot of contractions, but they are also dealing with just a high or low level of oxygen. They've, can, they've used most of the oxygen in their kicking. Uh, their legs are tired and exhausted. And uh, they run on the verge of having a hypoxic event. Uh, and so as such, having a very, very strong surface recovery is incredibly important. Um, we saw that yesterday uh, with Jennifer, who had a very close call on the on the line uh, where she had a her head booped once or twice uh, and then we saw that again with Mariana uh, who had a uh, underwater blackout at around seven or eight meters I believe
Okay. Do, 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 do. All right. Mateo says, uh, many amazing moments, but what Jennifer did yesterday was great. Uh, also really enjoying the safety team's work. Would be nice if we could talk to one of them. Yes, absolutely. We'll see if we can get one of the safety team to come up and chat. And I agree, uh, Jennifer's uh, dive and her surface recovery uh, is definitely one of the highlights for me. <laughs> uh, it was pretty intense to watch. Um, if you want to see that, you can check out her dive from yesterday on the live stream. Uh, all of the recordings are posted there uh, on the YouTube channel, so go check them out. Oh, let's see. Do, 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 do. Uh, are there any unofficial dives who broke the world record on constant weight? Um, as in, are you asking about like the openers? Because uh, openers are not allowed to do anything very deep. Uh, generally, it's a very shallow dive, no more than 40 meters. Uh, and it really is not for anybody to be diving deep. It's for people uh, and in the organization, in the event, to make sure that things are going okay. So it's more of just a cheeky fun dive than anything actually serious or intense or any real attempt at anything. Uh, so I hope that answers that. Do, 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 do. Mm. Uh, Willington asks, uh, "What's the penalty when a diver completes the dive outside of the announced or outside of the time announced?" Uh, so, divers also announce a uh, an announced performance time. Uh, so, for example, uh, Nicholas announced a 3:15 uh, minute dive time. Uh, that doesn't actually count against them or for them at all. Uh, during the point scoring and during the uh, dive itself. Pretty much it's only used for the safety team to know when they should be diving down. Uh, if they uh, see a diver who's gone way past that time, they know to be watching very closely to make sure that that diver continues to be okay. Um, knowing that diver that could be a risk, uh, that sort of stuff. If you're talking about uh, announcing uh, we're completing the surface protocol outside of the uh, 15 seconds after the airways come up. Uh, if they do not complete it within that time, that is a red card. Uh, and we've seen that, I believe, once or twice during this comp. I think on the free immersion day. But I could be wrong. Uh, it's been a long competition and uh, my brain is a little mushy at the moment. <laughs> uh, so please do forgive me if uh, things aren't as clear or as crisp uh, as they were as we started the competition. Uh, we're gonna get through this together, I promise. Ah, uh, yes, 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 yes. Uh, oh, hey Luke, good to see you. Uh, Luke is one of the uh, guys I play D&D with uh, in South Africa, so looking forward to uh, coming back and joining again real soon. <laughs> Uh, Dahab Freediver says, uh, four people going to 101 meters. If two of the four deepest divers don't make it, you'll need a lot of medals. That is true. <laughs> that is absolutely true. Um, yes, we'll, we'll have to see. The other thing that could happen is uh, we could have some early turns from the deepest divers, uh, and points-wise that could come out to having even more uh, people with 101 total points. Uh, so. We'll, we'll have to see. Uh, we're starting off with the first of our four 100 meter dives uh, coming up now uh, with Alejandro Linas of Colombia with a national record attempt uh, with an announced dive time of three minutes and 10 seconds. Oh. Oh, shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. Our divers have five minutes in the competition zone to breathe up on the line. Uh, our safeties will come, they will clip them on, uh, they will check the safety lanyard to make sure that everything is okay, make sure that the dive computer is attached, all of that. And then they, the diver or the athlete basically just gets to sit. Uh, sit, they lay there, they put their face in the water. Um, some divers do not. 
Uh, and they relax. And they, in that time, they're trying to slow their heart rate down. They are not hyperventilating. Uh, that is something that uh, we no longer do because we know that it is incredibly dangerous and risky behavior for our athletes and for anybody. So never hyperventilate. Never end hyperventilation uh, is either breathing too quickly or taking very deep, long breaths. Hyperventilation is basically anything where you are breathing over the tidal volume, um, which is the volume of air that your body wants to breathe in naturally and normally. Uh, we don't do that because that can actually make it so that you black out sooner than you would have if you were just breathing normally. 30 seconds. Wendy. Hello. Good morning, Brandon. Good morning. How are you? Very fine, thank you. Good. Well, Joined uh, once again for the last time during this comp, uh, Christian Maldam, mm -hmm. uh, uh, four, French coach, three, generally two, awesome human being. One, uh, we're going to watch one, Alejandro one, Alex two, dive now. Three, yes, thank four, you, uh, Brandon. Five, I'm happy to join you too. Six, I'm very Seven, Happy to, eight, to be nine, together with ten, you to command this dive. We have Alex, uh, a very strong free diver, he has showed during these World Championships amazing dives and amazing capabilities. Uh, diver on yeah. the line and, uh, Alejandro for this, uh, representing Colombia. New dive. He announced the performance is 101 one meters. Uh, we're going to see what he's able to do, but I believe he's going to be able to do it. I think so too, yeah. So he just recently did 96 meters uh, in constant weight bifins. And we can note that he's using bifins here again. Uh, divers during constant weight are allowed to use bifins uh, if they want to. Uh, what would be some reasons why divers would choose to use bifins over a normal fin? Well, I didn't know he was using bifins, so of course it changes a uh -huh. lot. Uh, the, the dive because uh, uh, going to 101 meters in bifin is a, is a huge mark and yes. uh, it's probably uh, some meters more than his PB so uh, let's see what he's going to do mm. I think Alex uh, is uh, reaching the 100 mark right now during this One competition the yes. meter dives yeah he did 100 meters in free immersion which was a national record I did 78 in constant weight no fins and 96 in constant weight bi fins. 70 down. Uh, and I have written down that his personal best before the comp was 93 constant weight bi fins. So really, it's five meters over his best dive. Yep. So it's a really uh, strong dive for him, but he feels very, very fine. Alex is very strong since the beginning of this competition. Great competitor. Yeah, showing a lot of strength in his dives. So he's really relaxed right now. He's reaching, he's reaching the mark. So equalization, no equalization problem is very good for that. And now it, it goes for the strong work, mm. for the hard work. Yes, the hard way back up. Nice up. I was with him on the on the beach and on the boats to, to come here, and he was looking fine. We had some uh, just some talks together. Good. Okay. Okay. He was he was focused on his dive and he was getting ready. Nice. Uh, it's Natalie Rodman that is uh, taking, care, uh, was taking care of, of him, uh, that is coaching him right now. Okay. Natalie is a very strong free diver. Yeah, I'm taking third place overall in the competition this year. Okay, up. you know already the overall ranking? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we, we released it uh, yesterday. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay, I didn't see it. So ah, yes. Up. Okay. Okay. Yeah, Alex still looking pretty good. Forty up, diver with safety. Being met by the first safety, uh, our deep safety with the scooter. So of course Alex is making a small gamble with this dive, up. but he has done the job for the competition, so um, he takes this risk. And uh, let's see if it goes. If it goes, of course, uh, that's, uh, uh, that's a lot of uh, good things for him and good points. So let's, let's see. Mm. He's getting closer, it looks fine. It looks fine. Yeah. Looking good. Still pretty strong. Driver approaching. Okay. Up, Alex, breathe. Breathe. Okay. Yeah. 
Yes. I know. Yes. So this time is going very, <laughs> very high on the line because of course during the concert with no fins, he had a, a small dip with yes. uh, his mouse. There was a very small dip. Yeah. Uh, so he was initially given a red card, uh, but that was overturned uh, and was given a white card instead. White card! Oh. Oh. <laughs> Absolutely amazing dive from Alex. That was a great dive, 100, 100 meters in constant state patterns. Yeah. Five meters of over, over his PB, that's a huge achievement for him. Yeah. He can be happy for all his dives during this competition and yes. for all what he has been doing. Congratulations, yeah. Alex. Absolutely. Well done. Whew. Amazing. Ah, okay, so we have a few questions in the chat I'd love to ask you. Uh, let's see. Uh, so during bifin, when a diver uses bifins, they are allowed to use a monofin kick. Is that correct? They are not allowed. Yeah, they are not allowed to They're use not allowed. a dolphin kick. You cannot. Oh. If, during if they, if they use uh, bifins during constant weight. Of course, weight. of course. Then during constant weight, monofin. That's what we see right now. They are allowed to do a dolphin kick as as much as they want. Yeah. They can do dolphin kicks. Right. That's Woo! the only difference. Um, and why would a diver who's wearing bifins choose to not use a monofin kick? I'm not sure that the dolphin kick or monofin kick is more efficient with bifins. I mean, mm. that, that's a question. I, I, I don't know exactly if some tests have been have been made regarding the efficiency, mm. regarding maybe the speed, the the, the, the the oxygen consumption. I don't know. But uh, when you use bifins, really the fact of uh, doing the stereo fins uh, movement, uh, I, I would guess it's the most uh, it's the, the more efficient movement. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would. I would think that as well. I would also think that because divers are so used to uh, training with bifins and training constant weight bifins, uh, the back and forth finning technique uh, seems like you know switching just to do the monofin kick would be a bit less efficient from term in terms of practice in terms of that. Uh, but it's a good question. I'm not entirely sure uh, what the answer is for that. Maybe sometimes when you're doing a very strong dive in bifins, if you do this stereo fin movement, uh, you feel tired uh, in the legs at a certain point. And maybe if you do a dolphin kick, of course, it will help you to release this tiredness in the, in the legs and, and have a, a bit uh, a movement coming from the hips and uh, 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 using other muscles, so it can be an advantage, never know. But of course, if you do this kind of thing during a dive, this is dangerous because the next constant weight by fins that we'll do, you will not be allowed to do it. So right. of course, it's not a good idea, I think, to, yeah. to practice this kind of movement. Right, you, yeah, because again, in, yeah, in constant weight by fins, you will be disqualified if you do a full cycle of a dolphin kick. That's right, that's right. Um, that's what happened to Shaiker Kumen at the beginning of the week. Yep. Uh, so it's dangerous, of course. Uh, it's very dangerous, yeah. So rather stick with the constant weight bifins technique uh, and just do the constant weight dive itself. Mm -hmm. uh, seems like the best idea. Uh, let's see. Uh, is there any compensation points added to divers who use bifins rather than monofin the constant weight discipline? No. No. If a diver decides to use bifins, uh, during the discipline, then that is it. Yeah, it's uh, his that's, choice, of course. It doesn't, uh, uh, of course, uh, like when you're using bifins, you don't have the same power uh, than with a monofin. Mm -hmm. So you don't. Uh, that's not an advantage for you. Right. So, uh, but if, if you want to, to work on your bifins and you don't, you're not, uh, you don't feel safe with your monofin, then of course you can do it. That's right. what also Abdel did that in uh, Abdel al -Wash. did that during the World Championships in 2019. That's right. And he reached an impressive depth in, uh, in Bifins, which was almost here on the podium, uh, if I remember well, uh, for uh, yeah, for the constant weight po monofin. Mm -hmm. so yeah. Some, some divers are so good with Bifins that they're almost as good as the one with monofin. But right. of course, they are almost uh, cannot reach the same performance. Sure, yeah. I mean, the deepest dives are set with a monofin uh, and yeah I mean it's yeah if we, if we were to sort of add points based on using bifins in the constant weight discipline it would be very difficult to sort of standardize across um, just with the power that's generated and every diver being totally different it's we just keep it the same 
and it's up to a diver to decide if they want to use a monofin or a bifin. Uh, let's see, what are the prizes for winners? Uh, let's see, there is a cash prize uh, for first, second, and third place in each discipline for uh, both men and women. And then we also have the Natalia Molchanova Award, which is given to the first place overall uh, in the competition for both men and women. Uh, and those awards will be given tonight, so make sure you're following uh, at Ada Freediving, uh, myself at Brandon Freediving, uh, or Brandon Freediver, uh, to get the updates uh, from the after party and the, the closing ceremonies tonight. Uh, we'll be taking pictures, we'll be letting you guys know the results overall, and all that good stuff. Should be a good time. Uh, let's see... Do, 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 do. What is Alex doing right now? He is breathing pure oxygen. Um, why would a diver want to breathe pure oxygen after a deep dive? Uh, they're doing a, a post-deco uh, dive, in fact, a small post-deco dive. Uh, breathing pure oxygen allows them to purge their uh, blood system uh, of the nitrogen. They've been uh, nitrogen, small bubbles, they've been, they've been uh, storing in their, their blood uh, system. So it's a way to to recover faster and to avoid uh, decompression sickness. Mm. Mm -hmm. So some people do it uh, at depths, like five, six meter depths maximum, of course, because they're breathing pure oxygen. So some do it on the surface, and some prefer not to do it. Mm. Uh, they keep this tiredness and they avoid. Also, it's said that might be it might cause some. Uh, uh, if you have a small lung injury already, it might cause it to. Uh, it's increasing a bit the risks uh, to have these lung injuries. Well, we have some <laughs> nice pictures now of guys, safety guys, uh, doing some uh, funny things. It's the last day, a lot of people, we all have a smile on the platform. Yeah. It's really happy. That's the eighth day of competition. And of course, yeah. it's been a long time in the water. And uh, yeah. We see Chris and Nina. Uh, yeah, doing it absolutely, yeah, having lots of fun, uh, for sure. Uh, yeah, the, the, the feeling on, on the platform is, the energy is high, you know, people are happy, they're excited. Uh, we do have a DNS from Rafal, I should probably uh, say that, uh, that's why we're not seeing anybody dive in the moment. Um, yeah, everyone's happy, everyone has had a long comp, we're all a little tired, maybe a little loopy. Uh, but we are generally in high spirits and uh, ready for a break. <laughs> I mean, you've been in the water every day. Um, I've been out here every day. That, that long time spent uh, underwater, in the water, over the water, like you, like you do, uh, Brandon, and a lot of sun too, oh, warm and so much sun. In the end, it's uh, it's retiring really after eight days like that. You know, you know, everybody's feeling tired. Yeah, the free divers too, but they still have some energy for for their dives. And uh, so uh, I think we would be happy to to <laughs> to finish this competition. <laughs> and we have still oh. have this uh, funny uh, funny thing. Yeah, from the, the safety guys. We do yeah. like to have fun here. You know, we can. You know, when we when we need to, we can turn on the safety, the professionalism, the you know making sure everybody is safe and comfortable. But we also know how to have a good time. Uh, it's nice to nice to have that. For sure. Uh, let's see. Mm. Extraordinary performance from Alex. Yeah, we're going to uh, have him join us just now. I think. Yeah, Alex, please come, come and join us. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Hey, bud. How's it going, man? Good. How are you? <laughs> Incredible. Amazing, good. man. Yeah. Well done. Yeah. I'm so beefy so dive. Cool. Yeah. I feel you... really good. I was not gonna mess it up like the last one, so <laughs> I definitely reached as high yeah. as I could. As high as you can. <laughs> um, yeah. No, it's it's wild. Like, I and mean, we we saw Jennifer's dive yesterday. Yeah. Of you know, grabbing nice and high in the line can save you from from that red card. Yeah, I felt strong throughout the dive. Uh, I mean, I did feel a little lactic, but I'm used to that from other mm -hmm. sports. And, you know, everything was just focused, and I knew I had it. 
It's awesome. Uh, it's yeah. Great. You came up looking really fresh as well. Um, much more fresh than I would have thought for a 101 <laughs> meter dive, which was a new personal best. Hey. Yeah. It's been so, every single discipline has been a personal best for me in this competition. That is nuts. <laughs> and like doing that in a competition, you know, area where you, you know, a lot of people will sometimes struggle with, you know, coming to a world championship event where you're being filmed and there's more people around and there's a different setup and busting out personal bests can be Ten difficult. Minutes. It's been incredible. Honestly, uh, once I unlocked the equalization, I knew that my potential had not been, had not arrived yet. So mm. I felt comfortable to keep pushing and, um, you know, getting there in free immersion gave me the confidence to get there with bifins and doing yeah. the 96 bifin dive. Right. Fairly easy, you know, seemed like another 10 seconds at a three minute 10 second dive was doable for me. And yeah, I'm just excited for what the future holds and, you know, for the next world championships and try to keep adding depth and yeah. improve. Absolutely, so really absolutely. Exciting time. No, it really is. And like, <clears throat> you know, a lot of people now were coming out of of the pandemic times and people are able to actually get out and go to places where they can train. Other people have been lucky enough to be locked down in places where they can train the entire right. time. Uh, <laughs> that <so>. wasn't me. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so there, I mean, there are people who are now getting out who have picked up freediving during the pandemic as well. Yeah, I mean, uh, Michael I'm, picked it up hard in the pandemic and he right. was lucky to make a lot of uh, gains during that time. Huge gains. I mean, even in the last year, he's made incredible progress. Um, so, yeah, I mean, there are some amazing divers who are coming out now. Uh, who are doing some pretty fantastic did things. Someone not DNA, did someone DNS? someone uh, DNS? Yeah, we had Rafael, uh, uh, who decided not to dive today. Oh man, I yeah. was looking forward to his dive. I know, also a 101 meter announced dive, uh, but man, it's been a long comp. People I am, are tired. I was really feeling it uh, today, the cumulative exhaustion, the the boring routine of every day, the <laughs> rest, sleep, eat, dive, and um, stretch, and it's just like mentally, I was ready for this dive to be over so we can party tonight. <laughs> yes, party time, we cannot wait. Um, hey man, I wanna say a quick shout out to a few people. Yeah, Obviously, please, please. my family always for supporting me, Shaika, my girlfriend, for always being there for me, and we then the many, many coaches that have helped me get to this point. Julia Musa, she is my love. Yes. I love you so much, Julia. Vitomir Maricic. Yeah. That guy has helped me out so much, has stuck with me, believed in me, and uh, helped me get to this point without him. For sure, will not be here. Um, Ricky, my coach, <laughs> he told me he would kill me if I didn't mention his name. <laughs> I love you, Ricky. And Matt today was kind enough to coach me as well, and everybody else in this whole place that has been so kind to me and, and loving and inspiring. Awesome. And I'll shut up now. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you so much for joining us. It's been awesome to have you. Awesome to watch you dive. Yeah, man. Um, so yeah. stoked. I can't, so I can't believe that I'm a 100-meter diver, honestly. Yes. It's like, not, in my, not this year. I didn't think it was going to happen, if ever. So well, I am super, super happy. Here we are. Yeah. You've done it. And now you can celebrate. Yeah, I'm about to. Thank you, guys. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you, Brandon, cool. man. It's a pleasure. Cool. We'll see you at the party. Yes, man. <laughs> see you, man. Okay. So uh, we are so happy yes, for Alex for all of his dives and all these PBs and this freshness he's bringing to the competition. <laughs> Thank you, Alex. Absolutely. Ah, we have a good question here. Um, are the athletes tested for doping substances and what are the penalties if positive? Uh, yes, they are. Um, there are, I believe, the top two. three, top two. Top two are automatically tested. And then a random athlete is tested that's it, that's it. Uh, every day. Um, all of those tests are then sent out to be tested. The results take about a month to go, I believe, mm -hmm. uh, depending on the, how busy the testing area or the testing facility is. Uh, so theoretically, uh, the results that we've seen so far, uh, especially in the like top placements, are not officially, officially, official. Um, they are pending review by the substance team. Um, we obviously don't expect anything. If there is a substance that has been uh, been detected, the uh, record is pulled um, and it is marked as a red card. That's right. Um, and then there are generally also uh, sanctions posted against that athlete uh, depending on 
uh, the severity, what uh, was what mm, the substance what the is, what the substance was, yeah. So the regular penalty is two years of ban. That's the regular one, but of course there are sometimes you can defend your case uh, mm. in front of a jury. Uh, the WADA, a jury, uh, the mm -hmm. World Agency for the Drug uh, uh, for the uh, drug for in sport. So, uh, of course, uh, according to, to what you've been doing and what the substance you've been taking, sometimes the, the ban can be shorter or longer. Or longer, or longer yeah. sometimes. And if you redo it, of course, you can be, be a live ban yep. from uh, from any competition, sport competition. So, it's right. a major. Mm -hmm. So, it does not pay to dope, is what you're saying. Exactly. Yeah. Doping is not paying and whatever. I mean, keep the keep the sport uh, keep the sport fair, fair exactly. for the pe people, all athletes to, to have the same chances, and, and then everything will be fine. Of course, yeah. the people who are using a, a prohibited substances will, will always will also take a strong risk, uh, huge on risk, a, a huge risk on what they they can do. Uh, because uh, this, uh, we don't know the effect of these substances on on free diving, right. on depth, at, for at example, pressure. at pressure. Yeah. Uh, so it can lead to uh, big problems for them. So absolutely, yeah. So avoid it and uh, yeah. don't don't use uh, drugs for your uh, in competition or ever. ever yeah. Ever. Don't do drugs, kids. Exactly. At all. <laughs> <laughs> Up next, we have. Michael Ko of Chinese Taipei also announced 101 meters, our third of four divers uh, who announced 101. So I, I don't know what, uh, what Michael did in, uh, in his training. Do you have uh, some clues? Uh, let's see. He's been working quite hard um, across all disciplines. I think uh, primarily focusing on free, immer free immersion, constant weight bifins, and constant weight. Uh, Offhand, I don't know exactly what he has done for his constant weight depth. We can go look at his results from Vertical Blue, though. Uh, we can check. See. What is interesting in uh, all this uh, start list is that we have a, a lot of people in the 100 range. Mm. We have uh, uh, quite a large number. Yeah, we have four persons at 101, uh, 101, while one uh, we're, we had 100. Uh, and I had a talk, a chat with the judges, and they told me that uh, there were consistent uh, there was a consistent number of people that announced more than an PP so uh, of course that's uh, all risky dives and I think some people here take the the opportunity to try a dive uh, over 100 today and probably they never did it mm. never did the dive even during training uh, the conditions are perfect let's yeah say, of course water is warm uh, there is no thermocline uh, visibility is absolutely amazing. There's no current, so mm -hmm. conditions are absolutely perfect. So yeah, it's a good good time to try. It is, and the other thing too is that you know you have such a strong safety team watching you. You have all of the safety procedures that you could possibly have to keep yourself safe. So if you were to do a dive where you pushed a little bit more, this is probably one of the better places to do it, just because you're so incredibly safe. That's it. That's it exactly. The the safety team is making a huge work, and they are very responsive. The, the, when there's a, a small problem, they are here very quickly. They are, there's a large amount of uh, safety divers and then the, the medics and doctors are on the boat and they react quickly. So the risks are very, very low. Uh, never zero. N never zero. But course. they are quite low compared to doing it somewhere else. Mm -hmm. For sure. So uh, it's also for this reason uh, some people might, might try to to do a, a deep dive today, mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. but it's very interesting because, of course, uh, that can lead to some people are going to miss their dive. Mm. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, I mean, and the other thing too is like you know, people. Are, it's the last day, so people know that if they push, um, some divers will dive more conservatively earlier in the week because they know that if they have a deep blackout, they could be banned from competing during the rest of the competition, um, and so they save the deepest for last. Mm -hmm. um, for oh, sure, that, that's also another point that uh, the, they take a bit more risk on the last day because maybe uh, if they if they miss it, really with a blackout, mm. uh, they One won't minute. be they won't have any uh, counter effects. Exactly, exactly. Okay, so let's wait for for Michael a bit. Uh, I'm surprised ah. that Rafael didn't dive. Probably had some. I don't know exactly. I was on yeah. the boat with him. 
I'm not quite sure. And uh, he was, uh, yeah, he was, he was looking very fine. We had oh, did he actually together. come up this morning? Yeah, yeah, he was on oh, the boat. Okay. He was on the boat. He, 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 I saw him going to for for his warm up. Okay. So uh, maybe some EQ issues. Uh, probably, probably. Yeah. yeah, I would guess. Or a kind of feeling it was not the day. I think it's probably uh, one of the person that announced more than his PB. Mm. Uh, one so, day. You know how it is huh? after uh, all these days of uh, competition, so that's yeah. the force. Yeah. When well, everyone's force ears. Depth. Yeah. And and their ears are getting tired as well. I mean, mm. you know, diving deep, there is Five, some movement in, four, the, three, in the eardrum, in the eustachian tubes that can become one, irritated. Official top. Plus uh, one. Let's see, uh, so Michael Three, did send me four, a text last five, night of things that he wanted me to say. Seven, uh, he said eight, he did a 71 meter dive nine, last year at the Ada World Championship and got a red card because he did the wrong service protocol. Uh, so he's looking to correct that this year. Um, today is also his one month 100 meter anniversary. Uh, so he did his first 100 meter on the 24th of July. The announced performance is 101 no meters. The announced dive time is 2 minutes so 46 let's, uh, seconds. Let's take a look at his That's technique. Two, it's very nice. Four, he has very good six. technique, Michael. Yeah. Streamline has very good monofin technique. I think he has been working for this technique a lot. This cannot uh, really improvise. Uh, 30, yes. 30 meters. He has now the, the ends along, along the body. Mm -hmm. If he makes this dive, he will be the second person uh, in Chinese Taipei history to uh, do a 100 meter dive uh, in a competition. 45 seconds. Okay, his cheeks are puffed out. He has taken his mouth fill. We see the technique that we've gotten used to seeing on him with his uh, hands resting behind. Uh, extreme line position. All the parameters are very fine and okay for him. So he is good. He is Still good. at about, about a meter a second. So he's good. He's a good speed. Yeah. He's uh, a bit, yeah, a bit faster than one meter per second. She's very good, of course. Mm. It's good for him. He's going to reach the bottom a bit. Touchdown? Quite fast, so it's good. Then he has Touchdown. first time in the water. Touchdown. One Touchdown. Touchdown. Going up. Looks good. It takes some time to put the tag in the on the wrist. On the wrist, yeah. It's not the, the more efficient uh, turn I've, I've seen. Mm. Just up. regarding this tag, uh, tag technique. But yeah. he's coming back up with a very good technique. Yeah, kicking very, very hard at the, at the bottom. Yeah. Uh, to start that momentum. Kicking very hard and uh, powerful, and uh, that's Seven nice. That's nice. Good yeah. technique. Outrunning the dive eye. I'll probably see a lot of that today. Exactly. <coughs> 60 up. Outrunning the dive eye is faster than a dive eye right now, for sure. Some divers are going to be very fast from the bottom. Mm -hmm. 50 up, dive eye with safety. Okay. And actually, what we're seeing. Uh, 40 up on the, the, the depth is actually what the dive eye is set at, not necessarily what the diver is at. Um, and at but as we catch up to him, uh, we get a bit more equaled out. Okay, okay looks good, looks fine, still uh, pushing hard. Very big amplitude. Yeah, very big amplitude. Well, now he's probably tired. Now he's yes. probably exhausted, yeah. yeah. Exactly. So that's why he's making this huge movement and the technique is it's not as, as breaking down a little bit to be expected. Michael okay. looks good. Signal. Michael looks good. I'm okay. I'm okay. <laughs> that's good. Okay. That's very solid. That's a solid dive. That's a strong dive. Easy. Very strong dive. <laughs> Easy. Easy. He says. <laughs> Two forty-eight. And that's fast for 101 meters. Yeah. One meter. That's very fast. <laughs> he goes 246. Uh, so he that's a very fast dive. Very fast dive. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Congratulations, Michael. That's a huge dive. Huge dive. That's a huge dive. He's now in the 100 meter club. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, club where uh, that is a. Uh, 
a lot of people want to reach and want to, to go for. I can tell you in the world, so many people told me I would like one day to be over on the meter mm -hmm. to do it. And so when you reach it, it's going to be very happy today. Absolutely. Very happy tonight and uh, probably uh, making a, a big party together with uh, Alex that we've been seeing That's before. right. Yeah. And Nicola that was always diving. That was diving just yeah. before. Nicola also entered the, the 100 meter club yep. this week. Yes. This is a one hundred one meter in free motion, so all a new hundred meter clubbers. <laughs> yeah, I can say. <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. You love to see it, you know. Ah, beautiful dives, beautiful dives. Michael was coached by uh, Fatima. Fatima that did not dive yesterday, mm -hmm. but uh, she's okay. She's fine, Fatima. And she made a, a very nice gold medal. Yes, absolutely. And she, I mean, she's been working so hard, coming from vertical blue, uh, taking first place overall there. Uh, yeah, this has been really, really good dives, uh, and I started this competition uh, with some ear issues, so, uh, yeah. So I have to, to leave you, uh, Brandon, for some minutes, I have okay. to take care and to coach uh, Eddie Lafin. Eddie Lafin is a very good friend because we are training together in, uh, oh. in the Geneva club, Apnea club uh, Geneva. Okay. So I'm very happy to coach him, aside from the fact that he's a French and uh, in the French team. Of course, so, yes. Uh, there's a, a special... Uh, uh, yeah, a special plus for this uh, for this coaching, and I'm sure a lot of people from the club are watching right now. So Perfect. I tell you, okay, Apna Club Genève, uh, and make you a warm uh, a warm uh, 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 welcome. Maybe if you join, and uh, I'm very happy to see you. Follow Eddie. You know, it's gonna be in some nice show right now. 102 meters announced, 102 and uh, meters. he's very strong, Eddie, this time. Awesome. Uh, he was strong in the trainings. He did uh, 103, and he was very strong. So we are really looking forward to having a, a good dive and solid dive. Awesome. Cool. The next one coming, Dean, is very strong too. Very one strong one diver, meters. Yeah. Yep. I've seen him on the 100 meter max, and he's very strong. Cool. He's very solid. A very good free diver. Brandon, Absolutely. see you later. See you later. Thanks for joining me. We'll chat soon. Whoa, awesome. You wanna come? No? <laughs> okay. <laughs> cool. Uh, I'm trying to get some of the uh, medical staff to come talk to you guys. So you, if you have any questions for them, uh, please do feel free to either post them in the YouTube chat or send them to me on Instagram, at Brandon Freediver. Uh, we'll get some uh, answers for you guys. Cool. Just getting a note that Rafael decided not to uh, dive today because he was having some EQ issues. Um, and that's a good call from him, uh, especially on, on deeper dives, on dives where you need to be have a lot of finesse with um, uh, gently pushing while also not losing the mouth fill, uh, diving very deep. You don't want to be diving when you're having any kind of ear issues. Uh, leads to injury, leads to difficulty. You don't want that, especially on the last day. Uh, something that we haven't talked about yet is the mental side of how uh, getting white cards or red cards impacts you as you move on from a competition into another one or in back into your training. Um, if you experience uh, a uh, blackout, as the last dive that you do during competition. Sometimes that can be frustrating, sometimes that can be uh, damaging, and then you, if that's the last thing you experience during competition, no. uh, you can take that with you uh, into your training and into the next competition. Um, so you generally always want to try and finish a competition on a high note. Um, and so far we've seen that happen. Um, and then Rafael, also finishing on a high note with having some really good dives during this competition. Uh, make sure you check out all of our divers' results uh, by clicking the link in the uh, YouTube chat, right in there somewhere. It'll be taken to the Ada website where you can see everything that has gone on up until this point, the final results for the women, uh, all the daily results, and then later on today, the final results for the men's constant weight and also the men's overall. Cool. Let's go on to some questions from the chat. I know you guys are asking them. Uh, let's see. CLB2C4E says around 30 meters or so mouthflow start to be needed. Extra care about squeezes, etc. Are there additional things you need to learn for very deep dives uh, from 60 to 100? Um, I 
maybe not so much learning. You need to learn how to, how, again, as I was saying, be very uh, intentional and very have a lot of finesse around how you equalize. Equalizing to the point where you don't push too hard while also, um, <clears throat> and also not losing the mouth fill, that sort of stuff. Uh, really, I think from 60 to 100, or really whenever you start taking a mouth fill, is to just focus on the feelings that happen with the equalizations and just putting in repetitions. Uh, repetitions with the equalization, also repetitions to uh, train the body's uh, mammalian dive response to turn on, to move the blood away from the extremities to the core, and to move around the tissue in the lungs to protect them. Uh, the quicker that happens, the more protected you are from squeezing and uh, lung and pressure related injuries. So that's why you don't want to push too quickly. Uh, you want to train the body to actually turn that response on uh, and support the body in that way. Uh, big respect to the photographers. Uh, every time he dives to about 30. Uh, yes, that's Camilo. <laughs> Camilo is diving very deep. Wow. Um, he's getting some pretty fantastic shots. Uh, lots of really cool shots of the sunbursts from uh, depth looking up, uh, of divers going down, of divers coming back up. Hi, Fatima. Hello. Uh, the other diver, or the other photographer that we should talk about uh, is Luke Cooley. Uh, check him out as well. Is that? Uh, that is Michael. That's Michael. He's playing Tarzan. He's playing Tarzan, <laughs> being or goofy. Spider-Man. Spider-Man. Spider -Man. Like Maybe more, more uh, <laughs> topically correct uh, at the moment with all of the uh, Marvel movies coming out. Oh my god. Um, <laughs> so goofy. He's so happy for his dive. Good. I mean, he should be. That was I'm a fantastic so proud dive. Of him. Yeah, it was great. He did a huge progression from mm. last year, so that was a perfect 101. Yeah, yeah, Super no, I mean... excited for Dean as well. Yes, oh, Dean is going to be diving now. Uh, let's see... Do, 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 do. Uh, white card... Uh, uh, hi, Shaka. Good to Wendy. see you in the chat. Thank you so much for your kind words. Uh, yes, Shaka. Uh, one of our divers here in the competition hey. doing some pretty incredible things. Uh, ready to party for sure. Five, four, three, cool. two, Dean one. of the UK, 101 one meter announced two, depth, three, announced dive four, time of five, three minutes and ten six, seconds. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Packing quite a bit here on the surface. Uh, divers will pack quite a lot, especially the line, as they go deeper and deeper. Dean uh, primarily, or, partially that does Britain. add more oxygen the to the body to use, but more so it allows meters. divers to take a mouthfeel at a deeper depth. The announced time is 3 minutes 10 seconds. Which means they can three, carry that, one, that air oh. deeper and equalize deeper. Randy, now! Uh, Dean opting for a arms down technique. 30 seconds. 30, down! Seeing some interesting movement in the knees. Not quite sure. It's the same movement. 40, down! Uh, 45 from, uh, seconds. From Matt Malino. Mmm, okay. <clears throat> yeah, I unfortunately wasn't able to watch his dives at Vertical Blue. 50, uh, down! Had some other stuff going on. One minute. Looking good. His free fall position Six, now. Down. For those who don't know, I'm joined by Fatima Korok Hungary. Down. 150. Uh, cheering for Dean. Cheering for Dean. Cheering Yay. for our friends. <laughs> it's a long free fall. It's a long free fall. Oh, Dean is really enjoying this this dive. Mm. Um, he had 130. Some, um, personal things going on, down. so he just really wanted to have a nice dive, so I really hope he's, he's having it. Yeah. 
you know, you never know what's going on in the head. Right, exactly. And that's something that, you know, divers in a lot of ways need to learn how to turn off when they get to a dive. Uh, and then other divers will actually use that, whatever that's going on in their head, uh, to push them and drive them. Oof, nice technique. Yeah. This is, this is his main discipline, mm. so he was like uh, fine-tuning and perfecting his, his way of diving to the protocol mm, okay. for the past months. Okay, nice. Um, see a very small amplitude again the movement starting in the abs and rolling down the body and also not seeing any movement in the top of the body very nice position yeah also the dive time is great dive time is good yeah we're on schedule uh -huh. so, super strong definitely getting tired. We do sometimes tend to see a bit of technique breakdown towards the end as divers are getting tired and need to recruit different muscle groups to do the same movement. Also, it's like you're using a little bit more your, your points. Right, that's true too, yeah. Diver approaching. Great, right. great. Come on, in. Side. Oh, Say yeah. it. Looking good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Making no, it look easy. Looking pretty strong. Yeah, there, super there's strong definitely diving. like a you know like a few more meters in there. <laughs> definitely, definitely. <laughs> Great. And let's get that card. <laughs> Give us the card. <laughs> oh, and that's a great card. Very nice team. Way to end off. Come strong. Come strong. Yay. And it looks like you really enjoyed it. So yeah. That's the most important. It is. Yeah, if you're not if you're not having fun while you're diving, as far as I'm concerned, you're not doing it right. Exactly. Uh, yeah, you need to you need to enjoy what you're doing. You need to have fun. It's so important. <laughs> <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. Okay. Big smiles. Love to see it. Cool. Uh, before you go, is there anybody you want to thank? You want to shout out to? You want to say hi to? Well, hi to everyone and thanks for following us. And, <laughs> and yeah, I... Probably my sponsors are not listening now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can shout for them anyway. <laughs> I say hi to everyone and uh, see you very soon. You know, we're from here we're going to cash. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Many people, so <laughs> it's not the end. <laughs> no, definitely not. Uh, so yeah, it'll be really good. It'll be good to see you there. Um, yeah. Me too. Yeah. Yay. Be a lot of fun. Just traveling all over the world. And free Always. Everywhere. Just free diving, having fun, <laughs> following friends. Yeah, it's the exactly. best. Exactly. Yeah. No, it's, it's really it's <laughs> the best ever. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Very fun. Also, I really enjoy just being on the competition because I don't do all the disciplines. Mm. And uh, I love just being around. Yeah. And helping out yeah. people. So no, it's it's great because you great. you get to be a part of of someone's journey. Yeah. Um, and sometimes you're just like more excited for other people than for your <laughs> own dive. Like like before Michael's dive, it was just like oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna do it. He's gonna do He's it. He's gonna do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, amazing. Oh, <laughs> uh, cool. Okay, awesome. And actually, speaking of, we have Michael here with us. Yes. Let's. On the side. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna. Over. I'm gonna give you some space. Oh, okay. Cool. <laughs> Thanks, Fatima. Yeah. Cool. We'll Bye. see you later. Bye. Right. Scoot over a little bit. Hey, Michael. Hmm. Congratulations. Thank you. Big, big dive. Yeah. Second person in Chinese Taipei history to go down past 100 meters. Yeah. 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 yeah absolutely beautiful. Making it look really easy too. I mean, I mean out running the dive eye, like. Oh yeah, did I? Yeah. Very good form. Yeah, Shout out to form. Theo, who taught me how to model him. Okay. So that's probably why I can have a good speed. Yeah, absolutely. 
Yeah, I mean, you you announced 101 meters and did it roughly 25 seconds faster uh, than most Dean, people. who we just saw. Yeah, most people. Yeah, I mean, uh, my dive time is always a lot shorter than others. Mm. If we look at all the 100, I mean, uh, Nicholas announced 315. Yep. But I did 244 on my watch, so yep. I'm like 30 seconds faster than right. him. Yeah. yeah. With the same depth. Yeah. I mean, that's that's sort of the thing is like, you know, in in constant weight disciplines, we don't actually care about time necessarily. It's more about the type of diver that you are. Yes. I mean, different techniques, different style, different everything. Yeah. Just, and also how you weight and right. put yeah. your neutral points. It's all different. Exactly. So some people like it having a really long dive time. For example, Abdel, he just enjoy a longer dive time. Exactly. He told me he just liked to take it slow. Yeah. relax and that's how he can go deeper and for some people like me i can't handle a long long dive time sure so i gotta make that's it short me. sure so and that's me yeah exactly everyone's different mm -hmm. and that's what i love about free diving yes ah oh, yeah <laughs> cool um let's see yeah so what's what's next for you are you where where do you plan on going next uh with your training with your um, for Deb, I'm actually done for this year. Are you done for this year? I mean, I'm, that's my plan to have a hundred meter dives to end my whole season. Okay. And I'm glad I did it. So it's like a perfect yeah. way to end it. Yeah. I mean, you, you just come from vertical blue, mm -hmm. you did this comp, roughly around three weeks of constant deep diving. It's, it's so much. It's, <laughs> yeah, like... it's too much to the point that, you know, the night before, I gotta admit, the night before the free immersion day, yeah. I was like... Can I just skip this day? <laughs> I don't want to do this. <laughs> Even though free immersion is my favorite discipline, but mm. I'm like so tired from just in all this pressure and you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. You know, not only the mental pressure of competing and diving and being in this sort of space, but also the, the physical pressure of diving to deep depths. You know, over time or you know, whenever you do a dive, that also impacts your central nervous system. Yes. Uh, almost more so than physically your body, mm -hmm. uh, you know, yes. like your muscles. Um, so you don't necessarily feel like tired in your arms or your legs. No, really. not at all. But at you, all. you definitely feel just mentally and emotionally drained uh, oh, after a long dive. Emotionally dive. drained for sure. <laughs> yeah, and it's it's so important to give yourself that time to recover, and is is something that I think. You know, especially like the divers who are coming from vertical blue to this comp are definitely incredibly drained on at the moment because yes. it, it takes it takes time for this the central nervous system to recover from stuff like this and for this kind of trauma yeah uh, you need some rest <laughs> yes especially for the people who have narcosis it's just to be honest i think narcosis is Ooh, the one that drain me the most oh. it's mm. really mentally draining and it's like you get tired from it. Yeah. So. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and as we, you know, as we always say with our coaching, uh, resting is an important part of your training as well. Because mm -hmm. um, if you're not resting, if you're not fully recovering, you can't actually bring your A game to training, uh, which means you're not going to get the full benefit of the training. And that sort of has a compounding effect of each time you train, wow, you don't recover exactly. fully, you bring less and less and less to the table. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's super important to. Uh, Sometimes we say less is more. Exactly, exactly. Uh -huh. Cool. Slow, take it slow is the fast ways to get to some places. Sometimes very true, yes, yes. That's, that's right. So we have Eddie Lafan up next. Uh, constant weight, 102 meter announced depth, three minutes and 10 seconds announced dive three time. Minutes, one minute. Uh, we do see him doing some packing. Uh, like already already far before mm -hmm. um, I know that some divers will do that just as sort of a, a final way to stretch their lungs a little bit yes 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 um, get a final bit of movement in there um, for those who don't know packing is an advanced technique that divers will use to basically add more air into their lungs on top of what they can fully breathe in on their own um, and they do that basically by sucking air into their mouth oh, closing their lips seconds. and then mm, this isn't exactly accurate, but swallowing it. <laughs> yeah. um, they, they swallow the air down into their lungs rather than their stomach. Yes. Uh, you know if you're doing packing incorrectly if you, if, you, the, if you bring the air down and then you have to burp a lot. Mm -hmm. um, then you're, you're not packing, you're just swallowing Ten. air. Yes. Um, 
but we will see some divers do packing Five, before they actually four, go for their dive three, two, uh, just to one, sort of add extra flexibility one, uh, kind of like stretching two, you would your three, your legs and four, your hamstrings before doing five, a run yes basically six, seven eight nine and Eddie has been Our doing diver on the line is Eddie a bunch Lafon, of hundred in training already. Mm. So we have a group that was shows like who's diving meters. tomorrow. And I was like, right. You know, Before dive time I even get to get here, ten seconds. I saw three, him one, announcing oh. hundred all the time. I'm like, okay. okay. So this is a pretty easy dive for him. I bet. I guess so. Okay. Twenty down. Yeah, we'll see. See a nice big amplitude in the kick. 30, Interesting how he seconds. didn't put his hands up while doing big amplitude. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's something that I'm interested in in learning more about. 40 um, down. Because generally, what you want to see in the technique is to have the center of mass uh, be yeah. at the abdominals, because that's where the power is begins being generated in constant weight. Um, and if your arms are down at your sides, that's more at your hips. And if you're continuing to use, uh, begin the movement at your abdominals, One minute, you, that pivot down. point around your body isn't exactly right, and you end up wasting some of the energy moving around the torso of your body. Mm -hmm. um, Seventy. So it'll be interesting. I think we can. We'll talk to uh, Christian when he comes back up, and we can talk about that a little bit more. I think he's definitely. A diver who emphasize on the relaxation more. Mm. So you can see that his arms is totally relaxed. 130. And that is like the natural position if you don't put any um, energy in your right, arms. Right, yeah. Arms are, are out to the sides a little bit. Uh, we will see some divers who will wear uh, bands around their thighs to oh, actually yeah. shove Touch their down, fingers down, into. Down. Yes. Uh, or some Coming divers up. will put their fingers up into their wetsuit top mm -hmm. to hold them there. Um, but as Eddie is not wearing uh, either of those things, he just uh, opts to have them floating off the sides. Yes. Which again is, you know, nice and relaxing. Mm -hmm. 80 up. Okay, really nice technique here. Nice small amplitude in the kicking. Coming back up. 70 up. What's it like at the bottom at 100 meters when you begin to start fitting again? How does it? How does that feel compared to uh, either starting on the surface or like halfway through your dive? I mean, I use a different style mm. between descending and ascending. Up. Sure. So for me, I mean, when you're down there with some more closer, you actually don't have up. much thought. <laughs> you just sure. You just enjoy the movement and mm. come up. That's it. Okay. Yeah. Love that. Up. Uh -huh, I would just say it Eddie? looks down uh, darker down there. <laughs> it does. It looks a little darker today. Yeah. Twenty up. I mean, we are going to some of the deepest depths that we've been at during the comp. Mm -hmm. um, but even still, it does Ten. feel a bit deeper than, or a bit more dark than it has in the past. Yes. Okay. Eddie grabbing up nice and high. Looking okay. easy. Looking easy, strong recovery. <laughs> easy. He's like, what is this? What is this? <laughs> did you, did you put deeper. 50? <laughs> uh, ah, but that's a good thing to have too, of like having the last day of the comp, having an easy dive, yeah. and also being like, well, what the heck? Why didn't I announce deeper? I mean, if you look really detailed, if you do a little replay, mm. you can see he actually. Yes! He was shocked when he got to the bottom. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Well, I'm there. <laughs> yeah, I'm already there. Yeah. Exactly. So, it's definitely easy. When you see that, it's an easy dive. Because you're exactly. so relaxed that you literally just miss the last right. alarm. Or the yeah, miss the last alarm, miss the, miss the dive plate completely. Yeah. And we've seen a few people. Uh, just go flying Coming past. Down. We saw you fly, go flying past it, didn't we? Did I today? No, not today. I think I think one of the previous days. No. No. Okay. I've watched too many dives. Yes. No. They're all true. kind of blending together now. <laughs> <laughs> we, we all look similar down there. <laughs> Everyone looks like a weird alien in their wetsuits. Yes. Like, yes. With the hood on, especially. With the hood on, especially yes. with the, the fluid goggles on. You know, what do you want from me? Yeah. You guys all look like aliens. <laughs> Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Are you going to stick around for a Jeku? Yeah. That cool. Means. Awesome. Uh, yeah. Perfect. Let's see. 
Let's go to some questions. Uh, let's see, I was asked some questions on Instagram, which I will pull up. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Uh, how often do you have to do equalizations when you're past 50? Oh, not very often. Hmm. I mean, it really depends on the person. Some people do constant pressure, so they don't even count or like they don't even have a frequency. Sure. They just push it. And some people... Lanyard is on does it like... Is set for one, I would five, say... Um, between game. 5 to 10. Depends sure. on the person. Okay. Depends on the person. Yeah. Depends on the depth as well. Yeah, it depends. Um, as you go deeper, you can... Um, you don't, less. To, you don't have to do as many, right. Yeah, in the top one, or in the top 10 meters, the pressure on you basically doubles from what it is on the surface. Um, so you have to equalize basically, you know, every every meter essentially to keep a, a yes. good, uh, keeping no, pr no pressure on your ears. Um, and then as you go deeper and deeper, that uh, frequency decreases because the change in pressure is also decreasing. Uh, overall, the pressure change is getting less and less and less until eventually, I mean, at the bottom, you can do, you know, one equalization every 10, 15, I would say, um, so for example, my dive to 101, mm. my last equalization, I can just do my last one at 85, and 85. I can just slide go for all the way down 15, to 100. 15 meters. Kay. Some people can even do their last at 80 and just slide to 100. Wild. That's not me, because I don't like it to sure. have too much pressure, but sure. But people can do that. Yeah. When well, you mentioned you mentioned constant pressure too. Yes. Um, so there, there are two kind of ways that you can think about equalizations. Either uh, pulsing, where you you equalize and you, you boop, boop, yeah. boop. Uh -huh. Or you, you equalize and you just hold that pressure. Yes. Um, Making sure the tube is always open. Right. Uh -huh. And there are, there are positives and negatives to both, right? Mm -hmm. With uh, pulsing, there is the potential for you to actually miss an equalization. Yes. Um, which can mean that as you go deeper and deeper, you have to push harder to mm -hmm. equalize. Um, and adding that extra pressure then puts pressure on the glottis and you potentially lose your mouth fill. Yes. Um, alternatively, with constant weight, one of the negatives is that uh, you always have a slight bit of pressure on your glottis, unless you're doing hands-free. So you don't necessarily, I would say it's hard to swallow if you mm. just constantly are pushing it. Sure. Because in order to push it, you must close it. So there's no right. way to get it right. down. Yeah. That's true. But it, I mean, it, to be fair, it is also one of those, it's a muscle, right? Yes, and, it's a muscle. Yeah. And it gets tired. Yes. Especially after holding that air in your, in your oral cavity for mm -hmm. such a long time, mm -hmm. adding a little bit of constant pressure on it can very, very slowly leak the mouth fill back down. Yes. Um, nothing huge. I mean, people can get down quite easily. Um, to your depths and also, keep that constant pressure. Yeah. Um, but for those that might not be maybe as um, maybe as adept with with mouth fill or with keeping the mouth fill or keeping control of the glottis, uh, constant pressure could be more difficult. Uh, also for more them. stressful. And more stressful, yeah. Yeah, for some people, yeah. Um, if you want to learn more about mouthfill and about uh, anything else that we've talked about, uh, go take a free diving course. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the best way to learn how to free dive. It's the safest way to learn how to free dive. Uh, and we're all about safety in free diving. Um, I often ask the question if uh, if someone thinks that free diving is an extreme sport, mm -hmm. and the overall overwhelming number of answers I get is no unless you do it unsafely. Unless mm -hmm. you're not following the standards, the procedures, the safety, then it's incredibly extreme and incredibly dangerous. Yes. It's like putting on a parachute to, to go skydiving, but not checking if the parachute is in the bag. Yeah. Right? Like, <laughs> or not knowing how to use it at all. Or not knowing how to use it. It's incredibly stupid if you think about yeah. it like that. Yeah. But if you know how to, if you know what you're doing, if you're doing it safely, if you're doing it with a buddy, it's an incredibly safe sport to do. Yes. Uh, and the risk is incredibly low. Uh, so go take a free diving course. If you have not, um, you'll learn quite a lot. It's always a good time. So one thing I would like to point out is that mm. people might think that blackout is really dangerous or, mm. and that's actually, you don't really get injured that much from a blackout. Mm. And what's um, the worst is actually having some squeeze. Right. Or even having water in your lungs. That's way worse than having a blackout. Yeah. Because when you even after getting at the surface, 
your lungs couldn't function properly, mm. so you couldn't get oxygen into your blood, and that's the worst. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, obviously, we don't want to have blackouts either. Yeah. It's, um, of course, but yeah, I'm just yeah. saying comparison. Comparatively. And so. Yeah. No. It's it's interesting. Because um, I mean, we often think of a blackout in terms of like seeing a professional boxer get knocked out, right? Yes, yes. Um, but that is very different from what, from what it is that we are seeing here. Mm -hmm. um, we're seeing a the body basically going from conscious to unconscious because it's conserving oxygen for the brain. Um, it's not something traumatic where you get hit in the head and your brain bounces around inside your skull. Yeah, or having a brain damage. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Wow, Immediately. Yeah. Exactly. And, and that's the thing too, is like, you know, when a diver blacks out, uh, we have our safety team here that's immediately supporting them. They're being brought to the boat, they're being given oxygen, they're being mm -hmm. seen by the medical staff. If need be, they're evacuated to the beach where they're taken to the hospital. Um, all of these things are in place to support the athlete. Um, yeah, our DCS is also mm. like one of the worst. Right, right. Yeah. Which is why we have the oxygen available mm -hmm. to our divers yes. in case they would like to breathe. One minute. A DCS is uh, decompression sickness. Yes. yes. Yep. Cool. We have oh. Jeku up next of Chinese Taipei. Mm -hmm. Announced 105 meters. Announced dive time of 3 minutes and 20 seconds. Um, offhand, do you know what Jeku's personal bests are? Um, I'm not sure, and I don't know if he wants to tell everyone, but sure, I enough. would say that he holds the Taiwan record for 108, mm -hmm. and he did that in vertical blue to like one, two yeah. weeks ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, this is, um, when I believe he did 105 for his free immersion in this comp, maybe. Okay. So, I mean, I mean, either way, this will be an um, easy dive for him. Sure. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Five, four, three, okay. two, and one. we are beginning. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, and he's really, ten. he's a ocean lover. Mm. He loves ocean. He trains. A diver on the line is Jaku representing oh, wow, Taipei. Okay. The announced performance is 105 ocean. meters. Dive time is 3 minutes 20 seconds. 3, also, 2, you can oh. see the, the name on his thighs. Mm. And, um, 20, down. So, of course, he has all the blue stuff. Yes. Blue wetsuit, blue everything. 30, down. 30 seconds. 40 down. Now we okay. see in a free fall. 45 seconds. 50 down. Free fall positions and um, also you, he's also that's just like Eddie who likes to mm. um, relax. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You can see how he enjoys some um, arms. Arms down to the sides. Minute. Just relaxing. And he got this light from Vertical Blue. Yeah, yeah, he's one of the divers that dives with a light on mm -hmm. uh, basically no matter what, hey? Yeah. I mean, he's used to because, you know, when we're in down. Dean's Blue Hole mm. and Bahamas, Long Island, and we're just used to having a lights right. splash on that, that rope and yeah. you can see really wide. Down. And we have been training for almost two months there. So right, yeah. Me and him are quite used to having this. Um, the light on. Yeah. 100. Okay. And also, as I said, it's getting darker down there. Yeah, for Let's sure. It does down. help to see. And one of the things to oh, note, yeah, too, is that yeah. he's wearing goggles. Yes. Um, goggles filled with, with water. Yeah. Um, so he doesn't have to equalize that airspace. Uh -huh. um, yeah, some divers prefer to dive with goggles on so they can see. Um, Nine, that's not his case, actually. Okay, yeah, why so, does he do it? So he could totally use it without the goggles, but we have up. like around one to two thermocline here. Mm. So when, for some people, the thermocline will um, affect them and sure. let them swallow. Right. Or, so if he's in, um, in the up. ocean where there's no thermocline, he could do without the goggles. Sure. And that's for me as well. Mm. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, with thermocline, you know, it's sort of a shocking change in temperature. Yes. And with the, you know, with the eyes being uh, open sometimes, you sometimes you can get unlucky, sometimes it feels uncomfortable and can be uncomfortable for you to, and can sort of throw you off. Yeah. We're super sen sensitive on the eyes area. Yeah. So having just cold water into your eyes, you will get a little shocked. Right. But the water is nice and warm around his eyes now because it's been in his mask. Yes. Um, so nice and temperate, nice and comfy. Mm -hmm. Then, okay. I think it's a lot faster than what he announced. Yeah. And let's see how it goes. Grabbing up nice and high. Moving all gear. Giving an okay signs, saying I'm okay. Mm -hmm. Surface protocol is complete. Looking good. Yes. Yeah, nice, easy, clean dive. Producing the tag as well, so we should see a white card here. Yes. White card! Yeah! yeah. Alright. Nice. So that is, <laughs> at the moment, uh, third place. Yes. Uh, at least third place, at depending least on uh, what happens. So he for sure will get the medals. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely amazing. Beautiful job from J. Ku. Yeah, and making it look really easy too. Like, mm -hmm. you know, we don't really have much context with the dive eye of like how deep they are or what that depth looks like. Mm -hmm. But I'm pretty sure 100 meter. Yeah, it's the si it's the depth or the length of a football field. Oh, or is no, it? no. That's that's a sh that's a it's small the, football field. It's the it's the length of the height of the pyramids, I think. Okay. I think I think that's what it was. Okay. Um, I looked up numbers a long time ago, and it's the last day of the comp, and my brain is mushy. Uh, so, probably misremembering some things here and there. Yeah, it's uh, eight day, day eight, so. Day eight. I mean, where's the time gone? It's, it's felt long and also fast. Yes. It's so weird, um, but. I'm ready Definitely to for another dive. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know there are some people going out shark diving tomorrow. Yes, that's uh, us. <laughs> oh, okay, perfect. Yeah. So, I might be joining you then. I Please am, do. I'm dying to go dive with some sharks. I'm mm -hmm. a big fan of diving with big marine animals. Um, and sharks are where it's at. Yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> should be a good time. Uh, is there anybody that you want to thank? Anybody want to say hi to you? Yeah, of course. Um, of course, my biggest sponsor. Yeah, my family, <laughs> of course, <laughs> will support me all the way, and Atomus, of course, on mm -hmm. my shoulders, and uh, my girlfriend as well, Taizen, Huaini, and uh, <laughs> that was in Chinese saying, "Okay, I love you." Yeah. Aww, and cute. Yeah, that's about it. Awesome, cool. Thanks well, for having me. Yeah, thank you so much for coming, for doing commentary with me, mm -hmm. for being an awesome human being. Uh -huh. um, you too. And, oh, thank you. Uh, yeah, we'll see you at the party tonight. Yes. Oh, I can't wait for the party. I know, it's going to be so good, so much fun. Can't, can't wait, wait for it, just to get some drink, you know? Yeah, having. absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> okay, cool. Cool. All right, I'm going to scoot over. Be joined once again by Christian for the final two dives of this half. Ah, uh, yes, all white cards today. Uh, big shout out to all of our divers. Please do feel free to wave those flags in the chat. Good to see. Uh, let's see. Okay. Yeah, there we can see uh, our taxi boat dropping off our next batch of athletes, picking up our previous batch of athletes. Uh, we also see on the left-hand side the uh, boat that is uh, there in case we need to evac a athlete. Uh, we also see the warm-up boat in the middle. Uh, that is the place where athletes get prepared, get ready, put on their dive gear leave their bags while they're diving and then coming back. Okay, I'm joined once again by Kashem Maldam, uh, just in the water for Eddie Lafin's dive. 
and we're getting ready to watch Abdel do his 116 meter dive with a nose dive time of 3 minutes and 45 seconds. That's uh, right, Brandon. And that's going to be a massive dive for him. Uh, mm. He's been training monofin for only one year. Yeah. But he's so good uh, in uh, by fins, of course, that uh, he has a. It's just. Uh, I think he can do this kind of dive. Absolutely. Uh, well, if I recall correctly, last year at the Cyprus Depth World Championship, he did this event in Bifins. That's right. That's um, right. And he took third place, I want to say. I think he, he got podium or maybe like fourth place in constant weight. Uh, um, I don't remember exactly, but it's true, yeah. I think uh, probably third place, if I remember well, with okay. the Bifins. Yeah. 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 Cause I remember Alexi was there, and I think. Uh, and then Petar was also there, and they both did. Maybe, I don't know. I don't want to speculate on what the results were from a, a competition a year ago that I don't remember. Um, but I mean, Abdel also was the uh, overall winner of that championship last year. That's right. He won the overall uh, ranking for the Cyprus World Championship. Yep. He's very strong, so he's been training a bit in monofin now mm. this year. So of course. Uh, he can increase his depth. Uh, I think for him, it might be quite conservative mm. dive. Uh, he, he could probably dive in the 120 range now, uh, but uh, of course he needs to validate that. So uh, 116 dives. Mm. Okay, yeah. Okay for him. Cool. But of course that's a, a, a absolutely a big dive. So. Uh, this is a... Uh... Okay, we'll wait. wait and see what he's will, able to do. We will wait and see, yes. Um, let's see, so... Oh, I had a question, but now I can't remember it. Uh, let's see. So right now, when Abdel is the, the third French to arrive this mm. morning. Yes. We, uh, we are very happy with the French team because uh, we have Nicolas Jaouen, he did 100 meters, first time in constant mm -hmm. weight. Yeah. We have uh, Eddie Lafin that made 102 and 102 meters in competition. That's his first time. First time also in competition, a dive over 100 meters. That's a massive dive. So now we have Abdelatif uh, coming over 100 for 116 dives. Mm. Uh, that's a massive dive too. So we have three French, three French uh, over 100 now. That's yeah. uh, that's uh, impressive to uh, such a such a level. It's huge. And the current French record is set by Guillaume Neri at 126 meters. That's right. That's uh, right. Guillaume has still the the world record, uh, not the world record, the, the uh, national, national record, record. Excuse me. Uh, the world record is held by, of course, by Alexei Molchanov right now. Yes, 130 meters. That's right. We did it uh, not only once, huh? I think twice at least. I believe so, yeah. yeah. Uh, I saw him doing this kind of dives. He's impressive because uh, it might look easy even <laughs> for a yeah. 30 meters dive. So oh, that's, what's that's his, what is uh, absolutely that's impressive. What's nuts to me is like these divers are making these these 100 meter dives look like 40 meter dives. Like they look, look so easy, so relaxed, coming up nice and clean and fresh. Clean surface protocol. Like it's... It's really awesome to see the top divers in the world competing and displaying their technique for us. Uh, it's so cool that we have you know the dive eye to be able to show it all. That's right. To, 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 to check the technique, mm. to check yes. the, the, the way they, they dive. It's, a, it's a, such a, a great tool for us. It is. Well, and it's it's nice for the athletes as well because they can look at their footage because you know they they don't really have anyone who's able to follow them down to 100 meters, recording them the entire way. Um, like, it's, it's nice to sort of have that and have, you know, see how you react as you fall deeper into free fall, um, or as you kick at the deep depths where you're completely negatively buoyant. Um, there are some ways to train that, but ultimately the best way to do is to see is to do it for real. And Dive allows us to see that. Let's go for it. He's going back. Let's go. Going down. Down. It looks a bit fast. I mean, uh, it's a... Uh, but I said that when I take a look at the, the time, yeah, he was yeah. very fast at the beginning. It's 
20 seconds, he's at mm. 25 meters, so he's more than one meter per second, so of yeah. course he's, he's quite yeah. fast. Well, he's cutting through that positive buoyancy on the surface as well. So you see that his technique is not uh, is the, with the hand along the body, beside the body. Yeah. Uh, some people put their, their hands in front, uh, so they are more streamlined. Mm -hmm. And Del Tex, of course, wants to say more relaxed. Oh, sure. Five so he, he prefers to use this technique. That was mm. also a technique that was used by Herbert Nietzsche some years ago. Mm. And that's a technique that uh, probably more the people that are, are doing very long, have, have a very strong One apnea minute. time, very mm. long apnea time. A longer Seven. dive time. Uh, uh, mostly using. Sure. Well, that makes sense. For the, the people that uh, are very strong with their technique, with the monofin technique, now. they prefer most of the time put their, their hand in front, in front to, to, to have yeah. a, above their head, yeah. above their head, exactly. it will be more streamlined and to have a better glide underwater. Yes, he's reaching the hundred mark. Of course, that's very important now. Down. There's a, a darkness really at this uh, this depth, yeah. but we still can see because here the, the water is very clear. Right. 110. Reaching One the point. reaching the bottom plate slowly. Mm. But sure. Now. Does Abdul get narcosis at all? Yes, he gets, but uh, it's not. Uh, I never heard him uh, telling he was very strong narcosis, and uh, I mean it's not uh, something that bothers him. Sure. Okay. So he may, but uh, okay, maybe we, we, we can ask him. Yeah. yeah, we'll see. Some people are complaining about narcosis and the the, the, the effects it's making it's making them. Uh, that is not. Mm. So. Yeah, it's one of those things that some people just have to deal with and. You can complain about it, or you can just uh, go with it. Exactly. Some people have good feeling hey, narco with narcosis, up. some others bad feeling. So it's a right. very different, diff different uh, way of uh, of, uh, of getting it. Hmm. Exactly. So we see Abdel is turning a bit around the line, but up. it's okay. It's fine. Mm. He, he has improved his technique for sure compared to last year. I can see. It's quite fine. I mean, he's. He's going back up. 60 up. Quite fast. It's okay. It's fine. And for for him, really, as apnea time is a major strength. Uh, if he does it and doesn't feel too too tired up. and everything is nice, of course, that's his, his last dive, his fourth okay. dive, Diver, right? Eight. Yeah. His fourth dive during the week, so he, he is a bit tired for sure. Of course. But uh, up. I feel I feeling good. Very good. He was strong. What we were, the, the, the talks we had together, he was telling me he was feeling good. Mm. So let's see. In the 30, 30 meters range right up. now. Yeah. 20 meters. 20 up. Still pushing, pushing. Kicking hard. And, and really turning around the line. We can see him circling around the line. But that's not a problem. It's just a, because his technique is not perfect, perfectly balanced. Right. Driver approaching. 340, 340, 345. Look, oh, it's a very easy wow. and solid exit. Wow. That's very strong from Abdel. Oh my gosh. He has the white uh, tag. And like, <laughs> he, is he very took strong. his three recovery breath and he's totally fine. Yeah. Not breathing. Amazing. What an absolute beast of a human being. <laughs> that's, that's a really uh, amazing, that's a machine. Huh, for yeah. Diving, uh, Abdel is a real machine. That's oh. impressive that. Oh. Absolutely beautiful. Well done, Congratulations Abdel. Abdel. Well, that was a massive dive. Yeah. Uh, he's, uh, he's so happy now. That's the end of the competition. Next yeah. is 117. We're yeah. going one yeah. down. Mental struggle also. A lot of questions. What do I do? Why do I announce? Mm. Uh, and then, of course, then the, this, the night pre, uh, just before the competition, it's very hard to sleep. And you're wondering what if you made the right announcement, if you're going to do it. Of course. Even if you feel confident. Sometimes you have to, to, to deal with this feeling. And it's not easy. It's not easy. Yeah, absolutely. Top level athletes, I can tell you. Yeah. Well, and Abdel is one of those people that is very open about how he's feeling, and you know, shows how how much he loves the sport and how important this is to him, and how much how much it's a part of who he is. Um, and this kind of love and excitement and happiness is. 
I think something that we should all strive for. Uh, if we can, if we can all dive uh, with the emotion and love that Abdel has for diving, the world would be a much better place. <laughs> Great, Luca. And what he's doing is coming he's back to the boat, and uh, <laughs> he's very happy. I mean, it's the final, the grand final. Oh, amazing. Amazing, Abdel. Congratulations yeah, once again dive. for this dive. So, uh, Oof. The, fr the, the French coach, team, team France coach, is very happy. Now yes. we have three guys, three yes. guys, they're all ranked. They all made very nice dives. So. Yeah. You've had a Over very meters. strong team uh, that has done team. some beautiful dives, not beautiful. only today, but across the whole competition. That's right, that's right. Um, well, almost, uh, except yesterday, where it was a bit harder for us. We had one red card and one yellow card. But yeah. It happens, I mean... It happens. It happens. All the competition was almost perfect because we had only white cards and such solid announcements too, with with gold medals, silver mm. medals, bronze medals. So we are, we, it's not still not the end, huh? of course, because we have Abdel now. Yep. Probably we'll do a medal, and we we are waiting for Walid's dive. Yes, Walid's absolutely. dive is going to come right now. And uh, 117 for for uh, yeah. for Walid. 117 for Walid will be a continental record for Africa, mm -hmm. uh, as well as a new national record. Of course, we know Walid. Walid is a very strong freediver, very strong, very solid, very good. Incredibly strong. I heard that in uh, training, I think he did 118 in constant weight. Okay. I was not there, so I didn't see it, but I think he did it. He did that, so of course, he's probably able to do it today. Yeah. Uh, we saw his free motion dive. It was a very strong dive. It was a very hard exit for him, mm -hmm. but he made it. Yeah. Uh, he got, uh, of course, a white card, and so, of course, because of that, he makes a, a gold medal. Yep. Uh, that's how it's go going to be his uh, second gold medal. He's going for a second gold medal right. at this World Championships. <coughs> And did not compete during the constant weight no fins day. I took that day exactly. off. Exactly. He probably took a day off to, to rest and to be more focused for today. Mm -hmm. uh, that's uh, some people did that because uh, of course uh, making four days in a row uh, in a, such a competition is very hard. And it's so, very hard work. Yeah. yeah. So what did uh, wanted to get some more rest? I had a chat with him and he told me. Christian, and for me, uh, I don't understand e exactly the, the meaning of this overall uh, mm. ranking competition. So it means, in fact, he, he, he doesn't want to play this. Sure. Uh, he prefers to play his uh, maximal depths uh, at uh, his uh, preferred disciplines. His preferred disciplines. Exactly. And that's something that divers need to consider when they're doing their announcements. Some divers will um, announce uh, knowing that they want to go for the overall. Um, and so even on the, generally the constant weight no fins day, unless you're a specialist, is generally the day that you sort of take it more easy. Um, a lot of divers will announce something shallow on that day, but still dive, just mm -hmm. to sort of keep the, the overall points going towards them. Uh, while other divers, again, yeah, like you said, are more interested in just giving their best for the ones that they really put their energy and effort into. Mm -hmm. And it makes perfect sense for Walid, who's going for a continental record right now, um, rather than, you know, just adding a few extra points on to hopefully go for the uh, first place overall. Um, just stick to what you really want to do and focus on that. That's right. Exactly. That was a, now I can say that that was the strategy for Abdel mm. this year to go for the overall ranking. So of course, in his announcements, he tried to play it safe, safe, but with of course uh, with a, a certain level of exposure. Huh? Mm. He was not doing easy dives, but he he, he tried to to make sure that uh, uh, it was a, a very safe dive for him so he, he could score the points mm -hmm. and, and store them for the next event. So now yep. uh, I think Abdel, uh, with all the results he's made uh, during the, the week, he's going to be window overall for sure now, it's almost sure. We're going to wait the, for the final result, but I yep. have almost no doubt now. Yeah. He, he won the overall and he's going to be, take the silver medal in constant weight mm -hmm. for sure too. Yeah. Yep. At least silver in constant mm -hmm. weight. Um, yeah, so that's actually sort of a question that I have for you, is as a coach who's coaching multiple athletes who in some ways are competing against each other in the overall standings, what is it like knowing and sort of compartmentalizing each person's 
urges or like like goals during the competition and how do you you know knowing that this one person's announcing this go to another person and say this is what I suggest you announce as well to keep it fair and, and everything so I really uh, I, I, I try to make sure that uh, people are not in competition between themselves mm. even if that can be a bit the case mm -hmm. and if this is the case I make sure that each person is managing his performances or her performances uh, in her own way and not taking into consideration the other ones. Mm. Uh, for the announcements, the day before, uh, I have a chat with each of the competitors competing and we talk together about the future announcement and of course this is an absolute secret, mm -hmm. an absolute secret and confidentiality that I do this, that I have this discussion. So I do not share it with the other ones. Mm -hmm. uh, I can share it when the announcements are over and we know it's over, then I can tell, yeah, I announced that. Right. But before I never do it because I, I want to make sure that they do not adapt their announcements according to the oh, others. Okay. Yes. That's not the, the goal. And I want to keep the team spirit high. It is very important for me because when you have a good team spirit, uh, you're, you, it's really enhancing and improving the, the, the global performance, uh, performances of all the athletes. Exactly. So that's uh, really my goal, to have a, a good team spirit within the team. Awesome. And to, to avoid uh, intra-competition, if I can say. That. Yes, yeah, that's, that sounds very reasonable and very fair. Uh, yeah, love that. Thank you. Four, five, Let's go for Walid. Let's go for Walid. We have He's very strong. Eight, national record nine, attempt, constant eight. record attempt, 117 meters. And he's going for 117 meters in constant weight. The massive dive, of course. Yeah. Top level. Uh, diver on the line is Walid Gudiaf, yes. representing Since Tunisia. Yeah, the announced yeah. performance is 117 uh, meters. The announced time is 3 minutes 39 seconds. Also in free motion. 3 3 9. He's very, very this strong in free motion. He's very, very strong in free motion. That's a, a major free diver. Yes, yeah. We'll definitely get a master class in free diving technique or in uh, constant weight technique here as well. So he has the arms above the head, he had, uh, 40 meters, and now he's uh, putting them along the body. Mm. So he's reaching his sink phase, his uh, relaxed phase, most relaxed phase, down. and going down. So About one, one meter, meter per second. second. Yep. So it's a normal speed, good speed. Mm -hmm. He's on the timing. 60 down. He's one announced 3:59 or 3:39 for this dive. Uh, again, the, old, the the announced time doesn't necessarily mean anything for the judging or for the replacement, but it does. It's what the safety is used to keep track of an athlete, make sure they know when they should be starting their dive down to meet them, um, and generally also making sure that you know if a diver's taking way too long, they know that they should be watching uh, for signs of hypoxia and potential blackout. So One thirty. His coach is uh, Marcella, Marcel Mouta, uh, our girlfriend, his girlfriend. Mm. Mm -hmm. So they are making a very nice duo, a very nice couple, yes. free diving together. And uh, she's on the surface, so she's probably wi waiting down. with a lot of, uh, <laughs> of uh, questions. Anxiety maybe a bit yeah. for her. It's not easy to, to wait for the guys when you know them very well. Down. They are going for a very deep dive. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a long time to just sit on the surface and wait. Down, <laughs> down. Coming up, Touch coming now. up. Two minutes. It's good. Okay. Yeah, looking good. What is good when you're waiting for people on the surface ah. is to have all this information about timing, about depths. Right. We can have directly. Yep. Because, uh, of course, it gives you uh, a sense and uh, an information about what they are doing. And mm -hmm. when it's going forward in a good way, it's good, good sign. Right, yeah. I mean, we're, we're hearing, uh, we've heard all throughout the competition, uh, somebody reading off of a depth sonar. Uh, tracking the athlete as they go down and up, and then also when uh, the safe, first safety meets the diver. Uh, it's just another one of the safety protocols that we have. Um, we do have the dive eye as well, but having it, having a sonar helps keep extra eyes on the athletes. If the dive eye stops moving for some reason, we still have that visibility on them. What is this strong? What is coming back up? That's good. Yeah, looking nice and strong still. Making big yeah. kicks. Yeah, making big kicks. I would uh, 
West Corner uh, will try to improve his end say. position, which has probably breaking a bit. He's, he's a bit tired right now. We can mm. see the, his leg movement are, are not up. as good as before. He's struggling. Ooh, it's hard for him now because yeah. to be hard, he's bending a lot the knees, which is not a sign of. of uh, it's a, it's a sign of being a, really tired and having a lot of lactic acid yeah. everywhere, probably a strong narcosis also. Okay. So the athletes have, or the safeties have jumped in to support Walid. Okay, um, they take him back to the surface. I think that his safety are very good. They're going to take care of him quickly. Yep. That's the case now, of course. So he's up. Being supported, removing all of his facial equipment. They're going to blow across his face. They're also going to give rescue breaths, supporting his airways, keeping them out of the water. And they're going to move him over to the medical uh, crew to give him oxygen and support him. It's uh, Thibaut that is kissing him. Thibaut is a yep. Canadian guy He's, uh, for the safety, and they're taking care of. Uh, yep. Of what he. Uh, looks to be recovered now. Still going to bring him up onto the boat. We're going to give him air. Ready to lift and lift. Okay, okay, he's fine. Walid is yeah. fine. He's just behind us, and he breathes, breathing again. Yep. It's just a missed dive for him. Yep. Uh, but uh, he's fine, and we are very happy for that because this is yes. the most important thing. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, you see too how quickly the safeties are able to jump in, support an athlete get him up to the surface. And I mean, as we've said multiple times now, the safety has been running drills, not only for the competition, but also every morning uh, right before the competition. Uh, even during the competition on the camera break, they do things here and there. Um, yeah, they, they know what they're doing. And when we need to, everything runs smoothly, support where we need to, escalate when we need to. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we're seeing that, we're seeing that here. Oof. So what is there? He's fine. He's okay. Yeah, and that's good. It was a very big dive for him, of course. Yeah. Sometimes he made it in training already, but this not uh, not not in competition. Of course, the competition mm. brings uh, st some stress and and pressure, and uh, this is always hard to 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 measure how much uh, this pressure will have an impact on a, on a dive like that. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. <coughs> Oof, okay, cool. Well, um, I think that's it for this half. Uh, is there that's anybody right. that you want to thank? I assume we probably won't see you again until the next comp, hey? Yeah, that's right, that's right. Uh, I still have uh, three athletes to come and to coach in the water. I have Cine Regis that is coming afterwards. Mm -hmm. I have uh, Teddy Valley that is coming afterwards too. And I have, uh, and, uh, who's coming next? Uh, and I have a Gilles Gambini too. So yeah. they, are, they are all very good divers. They are constant weight specialists. So I'm very happy I'm to awesome. coach them. Thank and you. Teddy is closing the, the competition. So we'll be here for the, the full closing so we can all Sweet. jump in the water and perfect have fun together yes exactly i'm looking forward uh, to that and uh for the moment i'm very happy because uh, i'm very s sorry for walid but this makes uh, abdelati falouache take the gold medal that's true and yep. that's your new gold medal for abdelati falouache that's impressive yeah beautiful and uh also the eddie lafin is uh, taking the third place and that's also uh, I'm, I'm very, very, very happy for him because uh, that's his uh, years is working awesome. at depth, trying to reach the 100 meters. And with this dive, he takes the third place and a bronze medal. We're gonna have a, a big party tonight, I can tell you. Woo! Cool. See you soon. Yeah, see and, you very uh, soon. Brenda, Thank you so much. I was so happy to, to come and to Such a pleasure. share this time together. Me too. Thank you so much. And uh, cool. let's see each other a bit later. Uh, and of course, maybe. Uh, on the commenting, uh, uh, maybe next year. Maybe Who knows? next year. Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> cool. All right, thank you so much. Everybody watching at home will be back in about 10 minutes. We have a very short camera break today, so stick around, grab something to eat. We'll see you in a little bit. Bye bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.
When we say paradise, what are we really talking about? A beach, a hotel, or the sun, or maybe the Caribbean. In case you don't know it already, paradise beach hotel is a lot more than that. It's about a great food selection and exotic cocktails. It's dancing to the sounds of the night. And it's also waking up to the sounds of the morning. And suddenly realizing you've been a morning person all along. Because in paradise, you're free to be whoever you were born to be. And move the way you were meant to move. If it all sounds way too perfect, it's only because paradise usually is. You know that feeling you get when you go out and breathe your first outdoor breath? It's filled with that fuel only a garden surrounded environment can give you. And you see just how comfortable tropical paradise can really be. That's what paradise is all about. Spaces. Magic. Fun. Details. Most importantly, it's about feeling at home. In other words, come to paradise where it's all about you. Double K is a manufacturer of premium diving equipment in Korea, a vibrant and creative country. At Double K, we focus on constant research to develop innovative and comfortable products to enhance the experience of diving for our customers. We take pride in our cutting edge and stylish designs, providing a sleek yet professional look whether you're in or out of the water. From wetsuits to fins, masks to equalization tools, Double K has all the free diving accessories you will need. Fall in love with your diving with Double K. Inspired by the ocean. Location, speed, direction, altitude, atmosphere. Mission two is more than a watch. It follows you wherever you go. On the journey to ageless energy. We won't fear the unknown challenges. We won't hold back our curiosity. Your pulse, your tracks, your wake, the direction and achievement in your life. Distance and breath. Merging with the ocean flow. Our sweat cleansed in the currents. gets darker as we descend deeper. But your light will shine through the depth. A variety of color options. Each mission, too, embodies your personality.
When we say paradise, what are we really talking about? A beach, a hotel, or the sun, or maybe the Caribbean. In case you don't know it already, Paradise Beach Hotel is a lot more than that. It's about a great food selection and exotic cocktails. It's dancing to the sounds of the night. And it's also waking up to the sounds of the morning. And suddenly realizing you've been a morning person all along. Because in paradise, you're free to be whoever you were born to be. And move the way you were meant to move. If it all sounds way too perfect, it's only because paradise usually is. You know that feeling you get when you go out and breathe your first outdoor breath? It's filled with that fuel only a garden surrounded environment can give you. And you see just how comfortable tropical paradise can really be. That's what paradise is all about. Spaces. Magic. Fun. Details. Most importantly, it's about feeling at home. In other words, come to paradise where it's all about you. Double K is a manufacturer of premium diving equipment in Korea, a vibrant and creative country. At Double K, we focus on constant research to develop innovative and comfortable products to enhance the experience of diving for our customers. We take pride in our cutting edge and stylish designs, providing a sleek yet professional look whether you're in or out of the water. From wetsuits to fins, masks to equalization tools, Double K has all the free diving accessories you will need. Fall in love with your diving with Double K. Inspired by the ocean. Location, speed, direction, altitude, atmosphere. Mission two is more than a watch. It follows you wherever you go. On the journey to ageless energy. We won't fear the unknown challenges. We won't hold back our curiosity. Your pulse, your tracks, your wake, the direction and achievement in your life. Distance and breath. Merging with the ocean flow. Our sweat cleansed in the currents. It's darker as we descend deeper. But your light will shine through the depth. A variety of color options. Each mission, too, embodies your personality.
welcome back. We are here live at the Ada Deptical Championships here in beautiful Roatan, Honduras. Oh. My name is Brandon Reed. I'm a free diving instructor and a breast training coach. And we have ooh, nine dives until we finish off today's comp. Um, today's event, the comp in total. Uh, I'm excited. I'm really, really excited. We've seen some amazing dives, not only today, but across this whole competition. Uh, please do make sure that you're going to the uh, link in the live stream uh, over here. Uh, there's a link to the Ada website that has the results from all the previous days and from today as we move ahead. Uh, the results from today are not official until after the judges review the footage. They give a preliminary result. The athletes then have the opportunity to protest if they want to. And then the final results are released, are released after that. Um, so for today's discipline, constant weight for men, uh, the results will not be out until around 4 o'clock-ish. Um, <clears throat> but everything else is done and set uh, and awesome. Five, four, three, we are quickly two, moving on to one. Sydney Regis of France. Last, He's announced five, 93 meters two, with an announced dive three, time of 3 minutes and four, 5 seconds. Five, six, seven, eight, Nine, ten. On the line, we have Sydney Regis representing France. And then in a moment, we're going to be joined by Danny, who wants to give a quick meters. shout out. And now, dive time is three uh, minutes. He's the one who's seconds. announcing the three, depth and time. Oh, and he's going to sprint over here and say a quick few words before running back over again. Hey. How are you doing? Good, how are you? Good, very good. Good, we're watching Sydney's dive now. Um, so watch him and then you can say your piece and then of we course. can Sydney, all be happy. Sydney is from uh, Martinique. He was born down. in the islands of France. Great mm -hmm. diver. Yeah, he's been doing an amazing job during this competition. Uh, he's done 81 constant weight bifins, fins, 84 down. free immersion, 50 constant weight no fins, and has announced 93 here now. Uh, all white cards. Uh, all white cards this week. Very strong diver. Down. Very strong diver. He knows his limits as well. Yes. Which is important. So important. One minute. And yeah, one of the divers down. that we've seen so far who dives with his hands basically on his knees. <clears throat> A bit more of a tucked in free fall position. Uh, we were talking with Christian down. earlier and who was saying that he does this in order to keep his. Uh, keep some of the pressure and some of the tension off of his uh, diaphragm and lungs. Well, it is interesting because every diver has a different technique and they really have to go with what they're most comfortable with. Exactly, exactly. 90. Yeah, some down. divers are very happy to have Let's their arms above their heads down. the entire time. Other divers prefer to keep the nice relaxed position. Nice turn. Yeah, beautiful turn. Such an underrated part of the dive. Up. If you have a bad or inefficient turn at the bottom, you can not only spend a lot of time down there, but also end up hurting yourself too. Because uh, that's where the pressure is the up. highest. Very true. It's looking strong. Yeah. It's quick frequency. 60 up. We're getting a little bit of chugging on the feed. But we're getting the idea. 50 up. That beautiful position, really yeah, streamlined. Yeah, very streamlined. 40 up, diver with safety. Yeah, look at those safeties, perfect timing. Yeah. yeah. 30 up. Yeah, they have such a hard job. <laughs> 20 up. Okay. Come on. Still looking good. You've got this, Sydney. Come on, Sydney. Ben. Yep, we're moving the nose clips. So still doing good. approaching. Conscious movements. Four for this. Real battle. Yes. Oh, that's good. Clean, okay. easy. Perfect surface protocol. Up. 
I'm <laughs> <laughs> happy about that. Yeah. Oh, so Sydney will finish off the comp with should. all white cards. He should. We're waiting. Yes. Perfect. Beautiful diving. Uh, that should put him quite high in the standings should. overall for this should, competition. Should, should, should. You know, if you uh, do good dives every time and you meet him, in the overall you're going to get a good classification. Yeah, that's absolutely right. Well, thanks for having me. I just wanted to, yeah. to say, um, you know, of course the athletes are very important in this sport and, you know, people for the viewers that see it, yes, it's one athlete going down, but I just want to stand up for the safety team that is here. Um, I've had the privilege of being part of this team and Chris, who is our captain, mm -hmm. um, and all the people, Regina, Adam, who does the calls, uh, we've got Faku, uh, we've got Ninia, we've got Tex, yeah, we've got Carlos, we've got Johnny, and you know, we never really hear about these people and, and these guys have been diving every day for the last three weeks, safety in hundreds of dives. And I just wanted to say thank you to all the, the, the safety team for doing what they do because mm. obviously I don't think they're recognized enough. That's my personal opinion, but yes, it's all about the, you know, the, the athletes. But a lot of the athletes also know that they cannot do what they do without the safety team. Right. Uh, well, so We've gotten a lot of feedback yeah. that the athletes are super appreciative of the safeties. They've, they've said they've felt very, very safe diving, very confident knowing that the safety team is there to support them in case anything happens. Well, of course, and the priority of a safety diver is obviously to keep the diver safe. You know? Of course, and, of course. Uh, they have to keep themselves safe and you know we've appreciated all the athletes this week as well. Uh, some teams have been amazing and mm. you know we're just happy to be here. I know everybody sees it as a big privilege to safety of this competition. Yeah. So I just wanted to say that and yeah I'll let you get back to your job. Awesome. Yeah? Cool, thank you. I'll let you get back to yours and Thanks a lot, while man, you're yeah. announcing. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Cool, see you. <laughs> okay. Scooting over. So that's a nice white card for Sydney. Beautifully done. Oh. Sorry, let me get situated. Uh, I jumped in the water during the break and I'm, uh, my pants are soaked and my shirt is soaked. But it's nice because it's breathing, it's nice and cool. And sitting in the sun on the eighth day of this championship event. <sighs> it's been hot, it's been a hot one. <laughs> but good, I've had a lovely lovely time. Uh, I wanna shout out to you guys watching at home as well. It's been absolutely amazing to have you. Yeah. <laughs> we'll be joined a little bit later by um, some of the medical staff who will answer your questions. So if you guys have any questions, please do feel free to post them in the uh, YouTube chat. I will compile them and we'll ask them as we get to that point. Uh, let's see, I also know that you guys Asked some questions earlier, but I did not get a chance to go through them. Uh, so please do feel free. If I haven't mentioned them, uh, say them again in the chat and I will answer them as best as I can. Uh, let's see, another question that I got Three earlier. Uh, let's see. Uh, what is Dive Eye? When was it introduced? How much does it cost? Um, don't know how much it costs. Uh, a lot. It's an underwater drone with a lot of really expensive components in it, so not cheap. Um, it was introduced. When did you? <laughs> Seven or eight years ago? <laughs> a while ago. Um, and the dive eye itself is a drone. Um, if you go on my Instagram Instagram account at Brandon Freediver, uh, there's a photo of me uh, riding it. <laughs> Um, it's a yellow torpedo-like thing with little fins on the sides. Um, in some ways, looks a little bit like a minion, uh, minus the pants. <laughs> um, go check it out, it's a really cool piece of equipment and it's really important for allowing us to actually see what's going on uh, for all of our divers, keeping our divers safe as well, and really making this sport much more of a a uh, sport that you can watch at home rather than having to show up at a competition uh, and float on the water and just watch someone dive down, disappear into the blue and then come back up again. Uh, it really is an awesome tool that has allowed this sport to grow. Uh, and I, I would actually attribute Dive Eye's uh, existence to the growth of the sport wow, quite a bit. Um, like I said, for so long all we had was maybe some drone, uh, some GoPro footage uh, at like 20 meters of divers diving down. 
Uh, and we've had, you know, bottom footage of the, uh, the tags at the bottom of the diver going down, grabbing a tag, coming back up again. Uh, but we haven't really had anything in between of the diver actually diving on the line, doing their technique, all that sort of stuff. And Dive Eye has allowed us to see that. And because of that, the popularity of freediving, I think, is growing quite exponentially. We're seeing lots of people not only taking freediving courses around the world, but also new instructors coming up each day. Um, the sport is definitely growing quite fast, and I'm very excited to see where it goes in the near future. Up next we have Afa Zhang of Chinese Taipei. He's announced 93 meters with an announced dive time of 2 minutes and 40 seconds. 30 seconds. <clears throat> 20. Ten. Afa is our resident merman. Uh, he five, four, three, <laughs> he has two, done one. a uh, dive with a uh, one, mermaid fin two, on to 35 three, meters and back, four, uh, five, which uh, let's see, I seven, believe he also did eight, quite a deep nine, uh, monofin uh, mermaid tail dive, dive during the vertical blue uh, this year. I'm not Taipei. quite sure on the that, announced performance is 93 minutes, but I believe I saw that uh, somewhere. Announced dive time is 2 minutes 40, 2, 4, 0. Uh, this is his favorite discipline uh, because he feels like a dolphin, which I have to agree now. with. Uh, putting on a monofin, uh, you basically feel unstoppable. The power that you generate using a monofin is absolutely now. incredible. You move so quickly. You, the power that you generate from your uh, hips and your abdomen and your Body kicking down. is wild. Uh, Ezzy 100 asks, is Walid okay? Yes, he's fine. Down. Yeah, he, he was up on the boat. He was breathing some oxygen with the medical staff. He came back around to the back of the boat where there's another oxygen tank where he breathed underwater for five minutes. Down. Came up and went back to the main boat. And now he's going One back to shore. <laughs> 70 down. Yeah, spam those flags, show your support. 80 down. Give our athletes some love. They love to see it. Touchdown. Touchdown. Coming up. Coming up. Yeah. It's Afa is one of the athletes sponsored by Atmos, who is also We're one of our eight. event sponsors. Along with Double K, the Mayan Princess Resort, and the Paradise Beach Hotel. Uh, big shout out to our sponsors Seven for not only up. supporting this event, uh, but also uh, the sponsors who are supporting our athletes, like Afa. Up. <clears throat> Sponsorships mean that athletes are able to uh -huh. compete more, Six train more, up. and it allows the sport to be pushed Safety further, diver. deeper, and more Forty safely. Up. So we really appreciate all of the support that you give our athletes. Thirty up. Okay. Twenty up. Approaching the surface, reaching that positive buoyancy phase. Dive and approaching. Taking off the nose clip. Beautiful dive. Nice and clean. Office had a bit of a difficult competition, uh, with a few injuries. Okay. Uh, white card! Uh, but that is a white card for Afa. Started off with a white card in Constantweight Bifins at 91 meters, and this is a, uh, another white card for him uh, at 93 meters. So big congratulations to Afa. Nice dive, way to finish off the competition strong. Well done. Wow. 
Uh, if you noticed, we have now switched back to our normal 10 minute intervals between dives. Uh, earlier in the day, we were uh, on 12 minute intervals between each diver. Uh, because <clears throat> the divers were diving so deep, we wanted to give our safeties enough time to recover. I wanted to make sure that the divers had enough time to move to the line and all of that. Mm. Uh, Carolina asks, I suppose it's not that common, but how does it work with an athlete blacking out deeper than the first safety can help? Uh, that is partially why we have uh, our deep safeties going uh, with the uh, scooter down to 40 in any dive beyond 80 meters. Uh, they are there to support an athlete at that deeper depth. Uh, generally, we don't see any kind of blacking out uh, any deeper than really 20. Um, obviously, each uh, each diver is different and each sort of hypoxic event is different. Um, but the biggest risk of blacking out is actually in the top one third of the dive. And that's due to the concentration of gases in the body. Uh, as you're going down, the gas is getting compressed in your lungs. Uh, the concentration of those gases increases. Uh, and as we know, gases flow from a high concentration to a low concentration. Um, so the high number or the high concentration of gases flows from the lungs into the blood at high pressure and that pressure increases as we go deeper and deeper. As we come back up, the inverse happens. The uh, concentration of the gases uh, becomes more and more uh, diluted and the gases will um, <clears throat> again want to flow from a high concentration to low concentration. Uh, as you come up, the concentration is higher in the blood than it is in the lungs. And so the gases will then want to flow from the blood into the lungs. Um, so we will see um, in the top, you know, 20, 20 meters, 10 meters, even five meters, that's when we will see a lot of blackouts is because the concentration of gases what might have been fine at 30 meters uh, is no longer enough to keep you conscious uh, at 10 meters, five meters, or even on the surface. Um, so that's why we have safety divers diving to 40 meters at depth, just to be that sort of extra, just make sure. But then for every diver, we have a uh, first diver or first safety diver at 30 meters, another diver at 20 meters, and they all swim up at the same time. And then there's a safety on the surface who is supporting the athlete in case of any hypoxic event where they black out. Um, does that answer the question? Let's check. I kind of forgot what the question was. Um, let's see. Uh, okay. So yeah, if there were an issue where a diver were to black out deeper than where the first safety was meeting them, um, we have a counterbalance system on the boat. Uh, what we would do is we would drop that counterweight that would pull up the bottom plate and because each diver is wearing a lanyard, um, the bottom plate would come up, the uh, lanyard would catch on the bottom stopper and would pull them up by their arm. Uh, we then get them up to a reasonable depth where they can be recovered, usually around 10 meters. Um, uh, the, the safety then swims down, gets them, brings them up, and then continues to uh, monitor them and support them. Uh, that's all been practiced, it's all been trained by our safety team. Uh, they've even done stuff uh, and, and exercises where they have taken a diver from a dive, uh, dropping the counterweight system, getting them onto the boat, administering uh, oxygen, that not being the case moving them to the uh, medical evac boat, taking them to the hospital, all as a training exercise, just to make sure that everything is running smoothly, everyone knows what's going on. Uh, again, the safety team has worked very, very hard to make sure that our athletes are safe uh, and everyone knows what they're doing. Uh, it's an absolutely amazing team that we're working with, as Danny said, uh, big shout out to them. Definitely been working very hard. We are all looking forward to a break. <laughs> Let's see, other questions, other questions. Wally is fine. Uh, I know you guys are worried about him. He is totally fine. He breathed some oxygen, went back to the boat. He's already on shore, already resting and relaxing. Nothing to worry about. Uh, let's see. 
Uh, what kind of foods do divers prefer or avoid for their dives? That is a good question. Um, a lot of people will say to avoid dairy or to avoid um, anything that causes like mucus creation in the body. Uh, dairy is one of those things that can cause uh, mucus for a lot of people. Uh, that is not a blanket statement though. Um, <clears throat> generally, uh, dairy has an impact on you if you're uh, lactose intolerant or you sort of struggle with uh, digesting lactose. Uh, that can cause a lot of mucus to be built up. Uh, I, for example, one of my favorite things to eat before a dive is a few bites of cheese. Uh, like I will just eat out of a block of cheese. <laughs> um, is it childish? Maybe. Uh, come fight me. Bring it. Uh, but I, I don't have any issues with eating dairy before a dive. Um, it's some, some of my best dives I've had cheese beforehand, so it doesn't really matter to me. Um, ultimately, what it comes down to is what makes a diver the most comfortable. Um, Five, four, three, two, one, We're moving on to uh, Gilles Gambini of France. I thought we had a bit longer to talk about uh, about cheese. We'll, we'll continue the conversation after this dive. Uh, Gilles has announced 85 meters. Our dive on the line is Gilles Gambini, representing France. The announced performance is 85 meters. The announced dive time is 2 minutes 35 seconds. 2, 3, 5. 20, down. The last competition he competed in was the France Championship uh, in the first week of July where he did 72 meters uh, constant weight. So he's added a few meters of depth, quite a few meters of depth onto this dive. Forty looking down. forward to seeing how he does. Uh, he loves the constant weight monofin because of the glide. Um, 50 down. And it is seconds. the most effective uh, movement uh, in the uh, animal kingdom for swimming and reproducing in diving. 60 down! One minute. 70 down! Really nice down. free fall position here. You can see that he has his fingers around the line, it looks like. 80 down! Uh, a diver is allowed to touch the line. Stand down. Uh, ooh. Coming up. Okay, we're going up. Hey, the diver up. is allowed to touch the line. They are not allowed to use the line to break themselves. Uh, so if a diver were to grab onto the line Seven, uh, up. to slow themselves down or to uh, use the lanyard Six, and twist it up. as a way to slow themselves down, uh, those would all be uh, considered uh, breaking and a disqualification. Um, if you keep your hand on the carabiner and just let it drop, or if you put your uh, fingers around the line like an okay shape, that is totally fine. up. Twenty up. Diver approaching. Allez, respire, Zilou. Tourne-toi. Tourne-toi. Voilà. Signoqué. Signoqué. Signoqué, Zilou. Allez, invoqué. Respire. Respire. Ok, there we go. <laughs> respire bien. Reminding him of his surface protocol. Respire, 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 respire. Uh, as we've seen in the past, and as we talked about, some divers can become attends, pretty attends. Uh, narked. Uh, nitrogen narcosis is definitely a thing that impacts these divers with these deeper depths, uh, where basically they feel uh, high and floaty, or maybe even a little drunk. Um, and you'd think it'd be very easy to remember the surface protocol, but uh, sometimes it's not. That's why it's great to have That is a white card, so congratulations to Gis and. Uh, 
We'll see you at the after party. Ah, uh, Brad Stone says, uh, I believe you're trying to rep your home state. Uh, I don't know how you know that I'm from Wisconsin. Uh, but yes, Wisconsin is, was, excuse me, was the dairy state, uh, has been uh, taken over from that by California. Uh, but we are the historic uh, <coughs> dairy state. The Green Bay Packers, uh, who is our uh, state football team, uh, we're called the Cheeseheads because we run around with big blocks of foam cheese on our head. Um, saying it out loud to a worldwide audience maybe doesn't make very much sense. Uh, but, you know what? Go Pack Go. <laughs> Uh, cool. Uh, yes, Guillaume, that is correct. Uh, there's a counterweight system with a rope on it that would bring the diver back up to the top. Uh, yes, boom, 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 awesome. Uh, next question. Uh, you look really cute up there. What is your secret? Stop it now. Sunscreen. So much sunscreen. That's what it is. There we go. Question answered. Uh, what kind of dry training are they doing? Uh, that's a good question. Some divers, a lot of divers, maybe even most divers hate dry training. Uh, they find it boring, they find it uninteresting, and they also find it uncomfortable. Uh, I would argue that static dry training does not have to be any of those things. Uh, in fact, the way that I train, the way I do my coaching and my teaching, uh, I've never had a dull session. I've always enjoyed my sessions. I always leave them excited for the next one. Uh, my uh, coaches all generally say the same thing. Um, and I attribute my dry static training to my long breath hold. I have a seven and a half minute breath hold dry. Uh, I attribute it to my, that long breath hold to my relaxation underwater, my ability to go deep, uh, very relaxed, very comfortable, and my enjoyment in free diving as a whole. <clears throat> yeah. Um, some divers will do uh, CO2 or O2 tables. Particularly for me, I don't like those. I think they are generally a bad way to train uh, because they make it so that you need to either end a breath hold early or more likely than not, you need to push past a point where you are not feeling comfortable. And I would actually argue, this is my own personal opinion, um, so if you have other differing opinions, that's totally okay. Um, my own personal opinion is that uh, CO2 and O2 tables are the reason why a lot of people don't like doing static training. Uh, it's because they force you to hold your breath for longer than you might be comfortable, and that creates a little scar in your mind of like, okay, I had to do this breath hold, this breath, breath training table, and it really sucked, but I know it's good for me, so I, I'm gonna do it. Okay, the next time you do it, Okay, you know, I'm going, I'm doing the session, I guess I really have to for my training. Oh, I'm getting to that point where the contractions are starting to come, I don't really like them, so... Uh, I'll keep pushing for a little bit longer, but I really don't want to. Third time you do it, man, I really hated doing these sessions, I really feel uncomfortable when I do them. Uh, I'll just do something else instead. And in that way, you very quickly lose out. I'm not saying that everybody trains that way. I'm not saying that that is the only way to train. Personally for myself, when I do my static training, I always use set departure tables and set intervals for when I start a new breath hold. So for example, if I'm doing a 10 uh, breath hold table, every four minutes I would start a new breath hold. I decide how long I want to breathe in that time and how long I want to hold my breath in that time. So if I hold my breath for three minutes, I will recover for one minute. If I want to hold for three and a half minutes, I will hold for 30 seconds, or I will, I'll recover for 30 seconds, hold for 3.30. The 
basic idea though is that I have the flexibility to add a little bit of more time or move a little bit more time uh, if I would like to. <clears throat> and in doing that as well, um, the overall goal with that session is to uh, get as close to that interval time as possible without having wild swings in time. So for example, if I hold my breath for 345, recover for 15, and the next one I hold for three minutes and then recover for a minute, that's no good. Wow, I want to be holding a minute 30, or 330, 330, 330. Um, in this way, you have the flexibility to breathe when you want to, to recover when you want to, uh, but also to push when you want to, uh, and push within your comfort zone. Uh, and I've had incredible results with that. I have really enjoyed my training. I have never in three years had a bad training session because I give myself that flexibility. Um, and I know that is definitely not the case for most people out there who are listening and who have tried a uh, static table before. Um, as a shameless self-plug, uh, if you want to come and do some of those sessions with me, I offer breath sessions three times a week uh, over Patreon. Uh, so you can go over to my Instagram account, at Brandon Freediver. In the link tree, there's a link to my group training. Click on that, join Patreon, and uh, we can do some training together. We have Jordan Levea Alvarez of Cuba attempting a national record of 81 meters in constant weight. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Looking forward to seeing his dive here. Online representing Cuba, we have Jordan Leiva Alvarez. The announced performance is 81 meters. Dive time is 2 minutes 50 seconds. This is a national record attempt for Cuba. Hi Maria. Uh, I have not been drinking water. That's a good point. I should probably drink some water. Thank you for reminding me. Jordan is a super nice guy. I met him last year in Cyprus. Uh, during the Depth World Championship there, <clears throat> as I did with a lot of these athletes. Uh, this is very much felt like a family reunion uh, for a lot of us. Sixty down. Hello. 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 How's it going? Good. Pretty good, you? Good. Uh, we're watching Jordan at the moment. Uh, do you want to introduce yourself and say who you are? Yeah, I'm Thibaut, part of the safety team. Seventy down. I'm from France, living in Canada since a long time now. Awesome. Yeah. One minute. Just came here for the competition. Perfect. Yeah. Love that. <laughs> We're watching Jordan his free fall phase now. Yeah. Coming up. <laughs> okay, nice strong pull at the bottom. Uh, as throughout the, in the entire competition, divers are allowed to grab in that candy cane area and give a strong pull, but anytime they grab outside of that, uh, that is a uh, penalty to their dive. I believe a five point penalty and a yellow card. I think if they. Oh no, it's up. okay, but it's a DQ if they pull. It's a, it's a DQ if they pull, yes, yeah. and if they touch, it's a uh, yellow card. Yeah. 40 up. Diver with safety. Thirty up. Freediving Trader, I am on it. Bam those sex bots. 20 up. Okay, Jordan is still looking good. Definitely getting to that phase though of the lactic building up. Although, I mean, Jordan is a huge, uh, he's in the gym all the time. He's such a big proponent of dry training. Uh, and uh, gym training, <clears throat> building a strong base and then transferring that all into the water. Clean surface protocol. Nice. Flapping that tag around. If you guys have any questions for Tebow for the safeties, uh, please post them now. Get him to answer a few before he jumps back in the water. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's a white card for Jordan and a new national record for Cuba. Beautifully done. Nice job, Jordan. Good to end the competition on a high note. Yeah, that's a great finish for him. 
Uh, so we've gotten a few questions about what it's like to be a safety at a world championship event versus a local event. Uh, what's the same? What's different? Yeah, like it's a bit more serious, a bit more like a, we have to be on point a bit more. Like, mm. like in a smaller event, like a bit more relaxed and a bit uh, like some uh, way to do it can be a change a little bit depending a bit on the judge and who is the chief of safety. That will be different ways to go. Mm. It's pretty similar, I would say. Yeah. Okay, yeah, cool. Is it generally a bigger crew that you're working with on a world championship event or a smaller like, or smaller crew? For me, like the experience I have, it's a similar size crew, but like this world championship is not like very big. Sure. So I think like a bigger world championship is like much more athletes would get like way bigger crew. Yeah. But we have pretty small crew there. We have like kind of eight of us pretty much yeah. the whole thing. So every day going in the water all day. It's right. Really cool. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it is cool to just sort of be in the water and to be around all these athletes who are yeah. doing some fantastic dives. Um, yeah, we've gotten a lot of really awesome comments about how great they or how great the safety team has been and how yeah. safe they feel. Um, this is a huge testament to all the work that you guys have put in and, and yeah, everything. We get a lot of good feedback from all the athletes, and it's pretty cool to see like the recognition of like how hard work we put in and knowing like they're happy about there, they feel safe. That like, yeah. Guess, has to feel good about it. Yeah, yeah, when you guys have put so much hard work in. Yeah, yeah it's uh, a lot Danny, of work for sure. Danny was just up here saying that you guys really like fight for it at the yeah. end. It, it feels very, the relief that comes as they get their white card or as they fully recover um, yeah. is, is really cool. Um, so what's it like for you diving with competitive divers and sort of balancing, you know, needing to jump in and do a rescue but also letting them sort of have the opportunity to continue to go up. It's like a it's kind of a little bit of hard sometimes balance. You see them struggling and they're still moving. Not sure, not going to grab them right away. Mm. Like uh, today with uh, Walid, like he had a small break almost, like since he wanted to rest, so I was like getting ready. Yep. Then he kept going and then he stopped again. I was like, is he taking a break Three or is he passing out? And like that's when yeah. we uh, intervene and yep. bring yeah, him Yeah, we, we saw quick. you yeah. down there uh, <laughs> yeah. with Walid and yeah, we saw the, yeah. the hesitation, the waiting. Yeah. And that's the thing too, is like these athletes are so well trained and so well honed that what might be a sign of like samba for some yeah. people would be them just on a normal day. Yeah, exactly. Um, and that's why it's so important for you guys to not only be training with each other and yeah. safeties, but also training with the athletes to know what their signs of hypoxia are, uh, how they push, yeah, and all exactly. of that. Like it's a, and we never want to grab them too early because like if they actually would make it, then, then it's, it's very sad to disqualify them. So. Yeah. Want to make sure we make the right call at the right time, not waiting too long so they bring we bring them up fast, but not too quick and not disqualify them for no reason. Exactly. So finding the right balance when they are actually mm. need the help. Right. Cool. We have a question here. Uh, Sindaris asks, when an athlete blacks out, why do you hold them by the chin? Uh, is that to prevent the athlete from exhaling? Oh, so we don't you know, grab them by the chin with kind of just on, like the, not the throat, but just the hair. The goal is to really block the airway. We try to get the mouth, the, the hand blocking there so we kind of no water go in the mouth and we can kind of hold a bit the nose clip in place so the nose and and mouth are totally sealed so they mm. don't get any water and then we get to the surface we can lay them down and if we need rescue breaths we don't push more water in their lungs or anything like that right that, uh, just to keep the airway out of like clean no water in it like, yeah as much as possible sometimes they may have already a bit of water in but that's a uh, basically protects the airway right yeah yeah one of the things that will happen when an athlete first uh, blacks out is that they will exhale the air from their lungs yeah and that's one of the things that you're looking for is yeah. the, air, the air coming out in like bubbles yeah exactly. um, and that is a uh, partially the body is doing that because it doesn't want to hold that co2 anymore yeah. it's a response from the body trying to purge the CO2. Yeah. Um, and usually that come like when they exhale a bit of air and you have uh, things called, I think the laryngospasm, like that mm -hmm. kind of block a bit the throat so that's really uh, no water going in. Like that usually would get some water in the mouth, but then it's locked there so no water doesn't go in the lungs. Right, exactly. And that's good to, to protect them to have water in the lungs, but that's also prevent us to put air in there and lungs as well together. So when we give rescue breaths, like it's the goal is not to 
necessarily put air in their lungs is to break that uh, laryngospasm and just open the door again so mm-hmm. they can breathe on their own and as soon as we get that open usually they always like back come up, up right yeah. away yeah i mean the the glottis is two fold of of muscular tissue yeah at that clamp shut with a lingerial spasm yeah um but you can still i mean because there there's there's two of them you can sort of blow past them with enough yeah. force yeah exactly um, so that's why we often see when you guys are giving rescue breaths you're blowing quite hard yeah exactly um, you have to go pretty strong so we break that like get some water some air in and then like that signals the body is okay there's air coming in we right find, we can breathe and then that's when they come back yes exactly right cool we've got mark and up of the u.s uh, now it's 80 meters uh, two and a half minute dive so training here all the time so it's yes. used to that water yeah, uh, absolutely. Diver on, in, uh, on the line is Mark Anop, representing the United States of America. The announced performance is 80 meters. Announced dive time is 2 minutes 30. Okay. 2, 3, oh. 20, down, down, my head. Tasty, down. 30 seconds. Okay, looking really nice. Again, you see that streamlined position with the arms above the head uh, while finning, and then moving to the arms at the sides for the free fall position. Uh, Something that we've seen quite a lot with divers nowadays is that they will, as they continue to free fall, they will every now and then do a gentle kick uh, to keep up their speed as they are in free fall. It's always finding the right balance. It's like kicking enough to go uh, fast enough, down, but down. not too much so you can stay relaxed as much 70. as possible. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Oh, so that's an early turn for Mark. 60 up. Uh, to be fair, some divers on last day will announce a deep dive, yeah. but then we'll just go up. based on feel. Yeah. Um, and as I was talking about earlier, it's very important on the last day to finish off the climb strong. Because there can be a lot of sort of mental baggage that comes from having a, finishing off a competition with a rough dive with a red card uh, that you then have to hold on to until the next competition to sort of shake off. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, and as anybody watching at home knows, I'm all about the early turns. If it's if you have a reason for it, that's the correct reason for you. Yeah, I think like early turn is like, pretty important to be willing to early turn. Like if you have any EQ problem, like pushing it is gonna damage your ear for no reason. Might mm. as well turn early. If you feel wrong, like might as well turn early and come back up safely and keep going and then like uh, having a blackout and saying like I think we saw Mark like showing his hair, so I guess he yeah, had a problem could be an EQ issue, pushing, equalization issue, I guess. Yeah, I mean the divers have been diving a lot and <laughs> you know blasting your your tubes each and every day and all that is you can get some, some swelling some discomfort so it'll be a yellow card for mark you will still get some points uh, but not all of the points that you would have gotten with a white card and that'll go towards the overall points within the competition uh let's see yeah somebody asked uh, are you doing the breathing when an athlete blacks out into the athlete's nose, and why? Uh, we could do either blocking the nose and through the mouth, or blocking the mouth and through the nose. What's important is to block the other one to make sure like it's not going in the ma- in the nose but out to the mouth. Mm. And like when that la- laryngeal spasm happens, like there, there's a lot of tension in there, and through the mouth it's much harder to get through them versus through the mm. nose. It's gonna go a bit faster, like more. It's gonna be more efficient to break that door and get the air in. Mm. Through the mouth, it could be a little hard. And also, if there is, like, if there's a lot of water in the mouth, it could, like, push some water in yeah, the lungs. Sure. So that's usually a bit safer. Usually, they still have the nose clip until the surface. So right. We know in the surface they have, like, a, they have no water in the nose. Right. So that's the main reason, yeah. Cool. Good answer. Uh, let's see. What's it like chasing after the athletes, like especially during constant weight? Yeah. Depends on the discipline. Like in a in a no fin, sometimes like uh, 
they go very slow and just wait there and say, okay, hurry up, I want to go up. <laughs> right, yeah. But like in your mind a bit, and it's very easy to keep up and there, and then you have like constant weight coming, and like sometimes you really have to go as fast as possible, like uh, some athletes can be very fast, and yeah. when you arrive at the surface, you just like, it seems you run for a, for a while. Like, do that. You're not out of oxygen, like you feel like I could stay longer, but my legs are dead, and right, I'm exactly. out of rest because I really do a sprint up. Yeah, you're, you're blasting <laughs> your legs, trying to just keep exactly, up with the diver. Yeah. Um, is there any, uh, like, is there any sort of position that you guys are following the athlete with? Like, the, if the athlete is here, do you guys place yourselves in different positions around, or yeah. it's sort of just like you show up and support them? We more try to get like a be mostly in front of the athlete, slightly on the side. So if you're if you're just in front, there's a line in between. You want to reach, you can have one arm on each side or a bit there. So a bit slightly on the side. But if you're too much on the side, you can't see their face. And seeing their face is a good way to guess a bit more how hypoxic they are and mm. how they feel in their dive. So being like in front of them slightly on the side for the first safety and second safety would just go slightly more on the other side so if something happened first safety gonna grab the hairway second safety can grab the leg on the other side to help us right uh, up going up and that's uh yeah so we kind of one diver and 45 degrees on each side like uh, safety so see them well and one on each side to bring them up if we need to okay yeah. awesome cool uh, anybody you want to reach out to? Anybody you want to thank? Anybody you want to say hi to? Well, I can say hi to all everyone that's watched me, all my family, friends uh, back in Canada or back in France if you're watching. And a uh, good thanks to all the safety team, all the athletes here. They've been all amazing. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Cool. Awesome. Awesome. Thank thank you. Thanks so much for joining me. Yeah, we'll you're welcome. See you later for the party. See you later. Yeah, exactly. Cool. <laughs> okay. Cool. Here we're seeing the... Uh, the dry area platform. Uh, this is where all of our divers uh, prepare for their dives. They get ready. They whoop, there we go. That's me. Uh, they, they do any kind of mental training, any mental uh, preparation that they want to before jumping in the water. Uh, some divers will come right from the uh, the dry boat where they got dropped off, put their wetsuit on, just get in the water and get right onto the dry boat without submerging their um, face. Uh, some divers will do that because they don't want to turn on their dive response until their dive. Um, we talked about this the other day, uh, but the dive response is a series of adaptations that our body has to uh, being underwater and pressure. Uh, <clears throat> that response turns on very strong the first time you put your face in the water. Um, and a lot of divers will want to use that because some of the, the responses from the MDR are basically designed to allow us to stay underwater and survive underwater for long periods of time. Our heart rate decreases, the blood moves from our extremities to our core. Uh, with pressure, the blood moves around the internal organs and uh, floods the tissues of the lungs to make it a bit more rigid so it doesn't collapse on itself. And then the spleen will also eject uh, oxygenated blood into the bloodstream to just add to what is available to the body. Um, <clears throat> a lot of divers will want to have that, all those things turn on all at once uh, and on their first dive because that's their deep dive that actually matters. Um, the only issue is that it can feel somewhat uncomfortable uh, to have that dive response turn on uh, that quickly and that intensely. So what other divers will do is they will actually do a warm-up before they uh, go over to the uh, line to dive. Uh, that's what we see off in the background behind everybody, uh, between all the boats and the dive platforms. <clears throat> there are three buoys in the water uh, set with lines between 20 meters, uh, 30 meters, and 40 meters. And divers will do stuff like they'll go down and do a hang, or they'll do some free immersion dives. Uh, and they're not trying to like necessarily warm up the muscles per se, but they're more trying to warm up that dive response and, and gently turn it on. So then when they get to the uh, dive line, it is turned on, it's ready to go. And while it may not be as intense as it would be without, uh, without the warm up, it's still relaxing and enjoyable and they can actually rest and relax into the dive easier, uh, more easily. There we see Dominic. Getting ready for his dive that will be coming up after Maddie, who is up next. Uh, Maddie, the Finn from 
Finland doing a 72 meter dive with an announced dive time of 2 minutes and 55 seconds. Maddie is a 10 time national record holder uh, in constant weight bifins. Uh, currently set the record one meter higher or one meter deeper uh, on the first men's day at 71 meters. Uh, also did a free immersion dive to 68 and announced a 48, 49, 41? I don't know, I can't read my notes. Um, he announced a 40 something meter dive uh, for the CNF day but had, uh, had an early turn uh, at 30. Uh, his last competition was the uh, Ada Freediving World Cup in Charm four, three, two, uh, in May, one, and he one, did six dives two, three, and set six national four, records in constant five, weight bifins. <laughs> So each day pushing eight, it one meter deeper. Nine, On the line from Finland we have Matti Eronen. He announced performance is 72 meters. Dive climb is 2 minutes 55. Matti is using bifins. Uh, as we've said before, divers are able to use bifins if they would like to during this discipline. Um, they are also able to do the dolphin fin kick if they would like to using bifins. Um, but as we were talking about with Christian Maldam, <coughs> excuse me, as we were talking about with him, generally it's not the best idea to practice doing monofin technique with bifins, especially if you plan to do constant weight bifins in a competition, because it can sort of train your mind that it's okay to do monofin discipline and monofin kicks uh, while doing bifins. If you were to do a monofin cycle of a kick during constant weight bifins, you would be disqualified. Uh, whereas with constant weight discipline, you are able to basically use bifins or monofin to get down. 50, down! One fifteen. See a nice free fall position here from Matty. Sixty down. Arms at his sides, chin nicely tucked in, not looking up or down. Just Third looking straight ahead. Oh. We have another at early 30. turn. Sixty up. Maddie has a very smooth bifins technique here. Uh, very small amplitude of kicking, but high frequency. Sort of like when you throw a manual car into first gear. The engine runs uh, pretty fast, pretty high, but the uh, overall effort on the motor is, and transferring to the wheels is pretty low. Um, so he's just going, he does his thing, and then as he gets up higher and higher, and as he has more uh, speed, he opens up the amplitude a little bit, and actually adds some real power behind the kicks. Ben. Yes, Matty is a hands-free uh, equalizer, meaning that he does not need to pinch his nose and blow when he equalizes. Uh, he is able to voluntarily open his eustachian tubes and allow the air to flow from his uh, nasal cavity in through the middle ear, or in through the eustachian tubes and up to the middle ear. It is something that you are able to learn. Uh, I know Adam Stern has a nice hands-free course available on his website <coughs> for purchase. Uh, so if you want to learn how to do hands-free, check it out. Uh, so that is a yellow card for Maddie. So some of his points from that dive will count uh, towards his overall standing, but not all of them. Or not as many as he would have gotten if he had just gotten the white card. Uh, Sindaris asks, uh, question, how often do you need to equalize your ears on the way down? Don't you run out of air to equalize at depth since the air is so compressed in the lungs? Uh, yes, you eventually do. 
um, and that is what often stops most of our divers. Um, something to uh, note is that as in the top one, or in the top 10 meters of the dive, the air in our lungs compresses to half the size. Uh, and as you go deeper and deeper, that air continues to compress more and more and more and more and more. At around 40 meters, we, well, 30 to 40 meters, we reach what's called residual volume, uh, which is basically where if you were to breathe all the air out of your lungs and force it all out, and then hold for a second or two, that's basically what it feels like to be at between 30 to 40 meters. Um, <clears throat> and that's what divers basically continue to feel as they go deeper and deeper past that. Now, in order to be able to equalize past that point, what divers will do is they will move air from their lungs up into their oral cavity before that point at around, some will take a mouthfill at 15, others will take a mouthfill around 20, 25, even 30. Um, and basically what they do is they, they blow out their lips, they add a bunch of air into their cheeks, they close their glottis, and they keep that air there. From there, what they're able to do is basically squeeze their cheeks, almost as if they're smiling. And in doing that, that will equalize the ears for that first part when you can't actually put your tongue up against the roof of your mouth. If you're doing a mouthful correctly, uh, you should not be able to actually put your tongue up on the top. Um, but then again, as we go deeper and deeper, that airspace is continuing to get smaller and smaller and smaller, even in the mouth. Um, and so you continue on, you can then eventually move to using a T-lock, um, or your P-lock, your T-lock, your K-lock, and your soft palate lock. Uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, go take a free diving course. All of this is covered, um, and it's a great way to not only uh, learn more about free diving, but also learn how to do it safely and effectively. Uh, as we always say, Safety is our top priority with freediving here at these competitions, um, and it should be your main priority as well. And you will learn how to dive safely when you take a freediving course. Great question, Sindaris. Thank you. If you guys have any other questions, please do feel free to post them in the chat. I'm happy to answer as they come in. Next up, we have <clears throat> Dominik Krzywiecki of Poland. He has announced 71 meters with an announced dive time of two and a half minutes. I haven't seen Dom very much during this competition. Uh, I know he's been uh, off running around doing all kinds of stuff. Uh, we, we originally met in the airport in Houston. Uh, I was in a basically in a fever dream uh, walking around the airport after waking up sleeping from sleeping on a bench uh, from a 10 hour layover and he comes up to me and, and taps me on my shoulder as I'm walking by and he's like Brandon it's me I was like dude I don't know who you are <laughs> um, but we've been chatting a bit uh, during the uh, Burgess Depth World Championship uh, or the, the Pool World Championship this year uh, on, on Facebook. He was asking me all kinds of questions and that sort of stuff and completely slipped my mind that that was who he was. Um, we kept talking and got here, said we were going to hang out a lot and I basically haven't seen him at all. <laughs> um, I mean we're both very busy of course but there'll be time to hang out tonight. As we said before, divers have about five minutes to breathe up as they're attached to the line. Um, sorry, we no longer call it breathing up. Uh, that is a relic of the past from when we used to hyperventilate all the time. Uh, now we generally prefer to call it the relaxation phase, uh, which is more about uh, slowing the heart rate down, relaxing, uh, and trying to just 
keep everything calm and relaxed in the mind, uh, happy, comfortable. Just focus on the dive. Uh, some divers during this time will do what's called a body scan, where they will essentially scan their body starting at their toes for any tension in each one of the toes. If they sense any, they will, <clears throat> I don't know, envision some relaxing energy moving to that area, or they will try and relax it as much as they can before moving on to the next part of their uh, body. And they'll scan up over their feet, over their calves, thighs, all the way up to their head. At that point, they are totally relaxed and they've also killed some time uh, just laying there waiting. Uh, One, two. Other divers will think of happy moments in their lives. They will um, think of their loved ones. They will uh, imagine themselves doing something or some divers will even just think about what they're going to do uh, after their dives. Five, four, um, I have a friend three, who uh, plans what they're gonna have for lunch uh, as they're doing their breathe up. Um, it's always fun to sort of hear what he was planning on. Sometimes it's very extravagant, uh, even though afterwards he'll just go for like a coffee or something. Uh, it's a good time. Okay, Dom is off. On the line, representing Poland is Dominik Chibietsky. We announced performance is 71 meters. We announced dive time is 2 minutes 30 seconds. 2, 3, oh! 20, down! Ooh, okay, there we go. 30, down. Removing some of that glare from my screen. Dom in a nice free fall position. You can see him holding on to his weight belt. Uh, that is in order to keep down. his arms in and in a streamlined position without holding on to seconds. too much tension. You can see he's 50, using down. a CNF lanyard around his waist. Um, we'll have to One check minute. on that. I wasn't under... 60, wasn't down. sure. I don't think... I didn't think divers were able to use a CNF lanyard for anything other than constant weight no fins. Um, early turn at 70. Okay, so an early turn. Uh... We also have a ghost line there, so we might work on that a little bit. Uh, Dominic looking good though. This is his first world championship event, but his 12th competition uh, that he's been to, so he's very experienced with competitions. Um, but as I've said, there are uh, definitely differences in competitions and uh, also world championship competitions. The added stress of having dive eye, the added excitement of having dive eye, uh, having a lot more people running around, uh, all those things have an impact on your relaxation and your ability to dive essentially. Um, some people really struggle with the extra stress and other people absolutely love it. And we've heard from athletes on both ends of the spectrum during this competition. Tom is up. Moving no nose clip. He's okay. Representing Dahab Freedivers. Will be a yellow card for him, but big smile on his face all the same. Just waiting for the card now. And then I'll get to answering your guys' questions. Yep, yellow card, but still beautiful dive. Big smile on his face. Maybe some relief for the competition being over. <laughs> but very nicely done. Okay, Carolina asks, what is your favorite discipline? My favorite discipline is static. 
I absolutely love static. It is my favorite. I love just laying there, the sensations, uh, even getting contractions, I find quite fun. Um, it's all, I love it so, so, so much. And then second favorite for, especially for depth, is free immersion. Um, again, you can have really long dive times. You don't have to worry about finning or getting much lactic buildup. Uh, your shoulders can ache a little bit, but they're a big muscle groups. So they don't really bother, at least me as much. Um, so I quite like static and uh, free immersion. Uh, let's see. Sundaris also asks, can you talk a bit more about hyperventilation? Why is it not a common thing anymore? <clears throat> I can absolutely talk about hyperventilation. Hyperventilation is, again, as we've said, uh, anything that is breathing beyond what we're doing breathing normally right now. So if, as you're sitting here not thinking about breathing, um, that is what's called tidal breathing. Your brain and like the, the lizard part of your brain that you don't think about controls it when you're not actually thinking about it. Uh, then when you start to think, okay, I'm going to breathe, your conscious brain then takes over. Now, when we hyperventilate, which is anything above tidal breathing, which could be uh, breathing very fast or uh, taking very deep long breaths, There, we used to think that we were adding a lot of oxygen into the blood and into the body. What we now know is that that is not the case. We do add a little bit more oxygen in, but really, when we're, whenever we're doing tidal breathing, we're basically always sitting at 99% uh, oxygen saturation. Um, and there's really no way to get beyond 100%. Um, what does happen when we hyperventilate is we purge CO2 from our body. And again, it comes down to concentrations of gases once again. Um, putting my papers down. So, gases want to flow from a high concentration to a low concentration. Um, when we are breathing normally, there is a higher concentration of oxygen in the lungs than there is in the blood. And so the gas flows from our lungs to the blood and then there's a higher concentration of CO2 in the blood than in the lungs, so the CO2 comes out, and then we exhale the CO2. Now, when we are hyperventilating, those exchanges of gases are still happening, but because we are 100% saturated with oxygen in the blood, we're not really adding anything else in there. But what we are doing with each exhale is we are removing the CO2. So, CO2 is higher in the blood than in the lungs, it's gonna flow into the lungs, we exhale, it's gone. Inhale in, CO2 is still higher in the blood than in the lungs, so we, it goes again into the lungs, we exhale. Again and again and again and again. CO2 is what causes the urge to breathe, um, and knowing that, you'd kind of be like, well, hyperventilation would be a good thing, right? Because we don't have these sort of urges to breathe, doesn't feel as uncomfortable, so we want to hyperventilate. The unfortunate thing is that our bodies need CO2 in order to know when to deliver oxygen to muscles. Uh, if we uh, remove too much CO2 from the blood, our, <clears throat> our blood actually gets confused and the hemoglobin doesn't actually release the oxygen. So even though we might have enough oxygen floating around inside the body, it's not actually being dropped off to where it needs to go. So we can black out sooner than we would if we were just breathing normally. Um, <clears throat> so as a result, uh, we no longer do hyperventilation anymore um, because ultimately it has a, it hurts our ability to hold our breath. Um, and especially at these deep depths, these divers are getting to a point where they are <clears throat> using all of their oxygen. They need all of the oxygen that they can have um, possible. So what we might also even find is some divers will hypoventilate, which is underbreathing, where they basically hold in extra amounts of CO2 as they prepare for their dives. Um, ah. Cool. We're going to uh, have a quick delay for about half an hour. Uh, we're going to get some ropes sorted, um, and we will be back. Uh, and when we do, we will have Tommy Passanen diving uh, from Finland. We will have Nadav Han of Israel and Freddy Teddy, sorry Teddy uh, Valle of France, uh, finishing us off. So give us 30 minutes, uh, and we'll see you guys then.
When we say paradise, what are we really talking about? A beach, a hotel, or the sun, or maybe the Caribbean. In case you don't know it already, paradise beach hotel is a lot more than that. It's about a great food selection and exotic cocktails. It's dancing to the sounds of the night. And it's also waking up to the sounds of the morning. And suddenly realizing you've been a morning person all along. Because in paradise, you're free to be whoever you were born to be. And move the way you were meant to move. If it all sounds way too perfect, it's only because paradise usually is. You know that feeling you get when you go out and breathe your first outdoor breath? It's filled with that fuel only a garden surrounding environment can give you. And you see just how comfortable tropical paradise can really be. That's what paradise is all about. Spaces. Magic. Fun. Details. Most importantly, it's about feeling at home. In other words, come to paradise where it's all about you. Double K is a manufacturer of premium diving equipment in Korea, a vibrant and creative country. At Double K, we focus on constant research to develop innovative and comfortable products to enhance the experience of diving for our customers. We take pride in our cutting edge and stylish designs, providing a sleek yet professional look whether you're in or out of the water. From wetsuits to fins, masks to equalization tools, Double K has all the free diving accessories you will need. Fall in love with your diving with Double K. Inspired by the ocean. Location, speed, direction, altitude, atmosphere. Mission two is more than a watch. It follows you wherever you go. On the journey to ageless energy. 
We won't fear the unknown challenges. We won't hold back our curiosity. Your pulse, your tracks, your wake, the direction and achievement in your life. Distance and breath. Merging with the ocean flow. Our sweat cleansed in the currents. The world gets darker as we descend deeper. But your light will shine through the depth. A variety of color options. Each mission, too, embodies your personality.
Okay, and we're back. Jokes, it's not five and a half minutes from now, it's right now. We are here in the water. Tommy is back in. Uh, sorry about that interruption. We uh, saw a ghost line, and uh, in order to make sure that the divers were safe, uh, nobody was getting wrapped up in anything, making sure Dava didn't get wrapped up in anything. Uh, we stopped everything for 30 minutes, about. Uh, moved positions a little bit, and now we are good to go. The dive line is way over there, uh, and we're going to start off uh, the last three with Tommy Passanen of Finland. 70 meters, announced depth, dive time 2.05. Yes. And you can even see behind me, uh, they have, oh, this side, they have even moved the platform a little bit. Uh, we switched around the, uh, the setup a little bit here. Uh, somebody noted in the chat, uh, Rima said, uh, not nice to have to sit in a wetsuit for half an hour. Um, yes, I agree. Uh, luckily, the divers did have uh, shade, and so they were in that uh, shaded area. Excuse me. But they were in that shaded area, they were resting and relaxing. Um, but it can definitely be uh, difficult for a diver who is ready to go. They have their announced, uh, they have their start time, and then suddenly they're told, actually, hold on for half an hour. Okay, Tommy is looking good. Fifty down. Sixty down. One minute. Okay, coming up on the bottom. Uh, we've moved Daivai away fairly far, so you can also see the bottom camera hanging off the bottom plate. Uh, that is what the judges will review when looking at the diver's dives, uh, in addition to the Daivai footage <clears throat> and the footage they take on the surface as they come up and recover. 50 up! Forty up! Diver with safety. 30 up. 20 up. 10. Let's see, all these divers in the water, our safeties, our photographers. Tommy is up. Strong recovery. He's okay. Ah, yes. Nice one, Tommy. Yeah, very nicely done. Yeah, yeah if you want. Cool. Nice white card. That is a white card for Tommy. What's going on with the screen of yours? You, I swear you cleaned it with a taco. <laughs> it kind of looks like it, hey? My sock for it? No, that's okay. <laughs> we'll just deal with it for the last two dives. <laughs> two to go. You've, you've done eight days of it. Yeah, exactly. Cool. Pop us yeah, yeah, for sure. If you yeah, want. Please. No, then watch some action. Yeah, absolutely. Get some live TV. Joined once again by Chris McKay, our Ooh. chief of safety here. Uh, Hello, everyone at home. Yeah. YouTube world. YouTube world. Hello, internet. <laughs> New fangled technology. Yes, exactly. Just don't go to a cutaway, because I'm, uh, I'm a mess. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, What's been guys, happening? How's your day going? What's happening uh, out here? My day is going great. Having a beautiful day. You know, so last it's been day, lovely out here. Uh, the wind has picked up a little bit. Uh, but, I mean, for me personally, it feels nice to have air con, essentially. Uh, the weather's actually much better than predicted. We're supposed to have uh, worse weather today. So okay. We've actually been very lucky today. Oh, nice. So, uh, we haven't had to use our weather day, which is uh, very unusual for a long competition. Yeah, I mean, yeah, eight days of uninterrupted beautiful weather yeah, is great. pretty yeah. fantastic. So we can see right. the results from the day so far. Um, uh, and we can also see the top three with Abdel Latif Alawash in first, uh, Jay Koo in second, 
from Chinese Taipei and Eddie Lefant of France in third. Um, they will round out the podium for men's constant weight, uh, barring any changes from the judges oh, after. Hello. Just <laughs> trying to see the screen. Uh, yeah, barring any changes from after the judges review the footage. Um, those three dives looked nice and clean though, so I don't see any issues coming from that. Um, yeah, go ahead. Well, you, no, you, you watched it up here live, so uh, yeah. um, unless there's something came through on the parallels or the camera's down the bottom. Right, really yeah. Don't know. yeah the, the judges generally pick it up on the having the dive eye here makes it so much easier. Yeah, so, right. Uh, be prepared for the verdicts. Exactly, yeah. I mean, they, uh, we have judges who are also watching the dive eye footage to sort of see if there are any like notes they need to take of like, ooh, that looked a little funky, we'll review that later, or no, that's absolutely fine. Um, so, yeah, cool. How's How it going? You, I'm good. It's going good. How are you feeling about the competition? How are you feeling about the, the safety team? It's been good. We've um, it's been a for a world championship. It's uh, it's been a low incident competition, which yeah, is always pretty nice. quiet. Yeah, pretty quiet. So that's what we look to see, and that's what we prefer to have. Um, uh, we don't like to have like a Daytona 500 where people watch for the for the mischief. No, yeah. absolutely not. Yeah, clean competition is a good competition. So yeah, people pushing maximum, you know, made amazing numbers, but everyone's been really, really good. So, yeah, absolutely. Fortunately, uh, sad to see Waleed have the wheels fall off today. Yeah, Oof. it's unusual. Um, yeah, I was expecting a nice clean dive from Waleed, but mm. these guys are at their upper limits, so yeah, you absolutely. Know, it's gonna come. One, yeah, I mean, you know, he can do a dive as many times as he want, but then he can also sometimes, you know, on the day something's going on mentally, physically. Um, sometimes Absolutely. you can just have a have a day where it's just not going in your favor. And these are big dives, you know, you're, you're almost at the, the world world record scale, so right, yeah, these exactly. Guys, so everything needs to be uh, in place for a successful dive. Exactly. Uh, like you say, it doesn't take much for the uh, to change the direction of uh, or the outcome of that dive itself. Absolutely, absolutely. Got Regina doing tightrope walking on our line here. Yep. And the safety team and getting ready to have a bit of fun, but all still, all in the pit working hard. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, let's see. <laughs> a question for you. Uh -oh. uh, Thomas Balud Balad uh, asks, uh, why do we sometimes see divers and safeties decompressing at five meters? Um, not very often. But um, just for health and just if there's doing a lot of sequential divers, a um, couple of guys with a lot of oxygen, we might get in and off gas at the end of the day. Mm. If we're finishing our session, it's good to uh, uh, good for muscle recovery, getting on the oxygen. Right. So, uh, when people have had a big big session in the pit, it just helps with the fatigue. And we've got a big party tonight, so we have to be ready for that. Absolutely, so, the most important part of the comp. No, it it, it helps. Just same as this, uh, same as these deep divers are off gassing on the on the oxygen. Right. If you're doing sequential, you know, deep 20 to 30 meter dives, it's nice right. just for muscle recovery. Yep. Yeah, I mean, we're dealing with a lot of pressure and a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of dives for the safeties and very deep dives for our athletes. And so the uh, gas does go from, you know, in the lungs into the blood at a higher rate. Um, and it takes time for that, uh, the nitrogen and the CO2 to sort of off-gas once again from the blood into the lungs and then be exhaled. Absolutely so. And so, so breathing pure oxygen basically speeds up that process by switching and playing with the concentrations of gases in the lungs and in the blood. I just want to scrub out that nitrogen. The safety team, they're not really exposed to any nitrogen uh, exposure just because of the rotation, but it's just nice for the muscle uh, recovery. Absolutely. So there's no, no chance of DCS in the dives that we're doing. We mm. just want to watch that carefully. That you know, between each deep dive, it might be up to 30 minutes on a, on a demo, right. so there's, there's a lot of time in between. Oh, Surface man, intervals are very important for the safety divers and our divers, just as much as it is for scuba diving. Yeah, so yes. important. We're getting another back on the line and looking yes. forward to this dive. I know, the yes. man, the myth, the legend. The guy who laughs at waves and leaves oh, his ladies. airways oh, gosh. just centimeters above. Was it the free diving Viking? He's got, a, he's got a sticker on his on his fins. It's quite ah, funny. Nice. It's very suitable. Love that. He's had a great competition. Yeah. So he's been nice. He's been here in, in uh, he was in for a few days before the competition. Got some good training in. So and he's had a great run with it since then. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. He's, he did a national record of 64 meters in constant weight bi fins, uh, 73 meters in uh, free immersion, and 50 meters in CNF, and is aiming to do 69 here today. Good boy. Yeah. Very excited to see this dive. So yeah, he's been training in Dahab, as he's been uh, yep. 
uh, uh, with Gus. With Gus. At Touchdown. That's the one. I That's believe. the one. That's our, uh... Shout out to Gus. Hey Gus. Hopefully see you sometime in the next year. See you back uh, in the water. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Be nice to go do some training in Dahab. Heading to Ahmed uh, after cash this year. You are? Uh, yeah. No, so nice. it'll be a good time to do a little bit of training for myself. A little bit of diving for myself. I've just been doing so much teaching lately that I haven't really had the opportunity to do my own training. No, that's just not... chasing Why students around. Which is, I mean, to be fair, I absolutely love teaching. Uh, part of the reason why I enjoy this job so much is because I just get to talk about free diving non-stop for hours. Uh, yeah, that you do. Yeah. Yeah, basically, yeah. So it'd be nice, I'd love to get back into Five, Southeast Asia again four, uh, in, in the very near future. Mm. So, uh, one, that's beautiful. I love it. It's been a long time one, since I've been there. I used to two, spend a lot of time there. Three, four, All right. Five, Let's watch six, our boy Nadav. Seven, Let's wash him go. Nine, ten. Taking a big breath. Give me some packs. 20. On the line, we have down. another Bahan representing Israel. The now depth is 69 meters. Dive time is 2 minutes 30 seconds. 2, 3, oh! There we go, yeah. Beautiful. 20, down! As we said before, divers are allowed to use bifins if they would like. Uh, they don't necessarily have to use a monofin. Uh, some divers will choose to use bifins over a monofin because they just are more comfortable with the technique. Other divers simply don't own a monofin. Um, that's the reason why I don't compete in monofin. Because uh, they're kind of expensive. Well, so the monofin, uh, the monofin's sort of taken a backslide lately. Everyone's gone back into the, the bifins. Mm. Now the, the technology in bifins has just gone through the roof. Right, People yeah. Achieving almost similar depths in bifins as on the mono. It's just amazing. Yeah, absolutely. 50 down. One we had uh, Alex Linus today doing 101 meters in bifins. Right, yeah. It's just, and that was a new uh, personal best for him, too. PB and everything. Is, uh, yeah, wild. So I don't know if he maintained his bifin kick. It looked like he maintained bifin kick the whole time. I was mm. down there watching him. Which, uh, which with uh, in a constant weight discipline, you can actually then go into dolphin kick. Here's the approaching. Beautiful. Nice little turn there. Yeah. Taking a moment. Beautiful. Feel free to come home to Dove. There we yep. go. There we go. Ooh, he, it's difficult to see with the glare and far away, but there's a possibility he may have grabbed outside of the candy cane. Um, diver, it, it's, it was very close, and I mean, the glare is insane, so. <laughs> you guys watching at home can, can tell me uh, in the chat. Yeah, it's a, that's it, Dobby Min, you scoundrels. Yeah. Let him up. get his white coat. Come on, no dive. Let's keep it pretty. Keep it pretty. Get the white card. Let's end this thing off with a bang. Diver with safety. Dirty up. You know the safety dives, Carlos. Carlos has been enjoying uh, watching all the diver. He's been watching you a lot on, on yeah. the diver every afternoon. Ah, nice. Getting the replays. Up. Good. I'm so glad. Oh, he just likes your voice. Ah, ooh, even better. So Carlos in there. Oh, the nice strong team. Got John in there. Mm -hmm. Those cheeky photographers in the background. Always, ever present. Oh, no, there we go. Almost there. Grabbing up higher today. Good. Love to see it. That a boy. Well done, Adolf. Well done. Gave it up. There's a tag. Yes, it's important to keep the airways nice and high even after you've completed your surface protocol because if your airways do dip. Uh, oh, come on. Yes. I really wish you would just grab up a little bit higher. Hey, as long as he holds his position. So, the big thing is when you're on the line, even if a wave comes through, if the diver doesn't move in relation to the line, True. It, it's called as a wave. So, even though the airways potentially could go under in the wave, uh, the judges are smart enough to know that it's uh, it's a wave and not not a movement of the athlete against the against the line. That's true. That is very true. Very easy. Still like makes me nervous though. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, no, but he looks super happy. 
And he should be. I mean, that's a fantastic way to end off the competition. He's had a very strong competition. Uh, yeah, all white cards for him, uh, which is absolutely fantastic. What you love to see. Uh, now's the time to ask for any more questions you guys may have. Uh, as we're getting towards the end. Last chance to talk about free diving in cenotes in Mexico. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> tell us a little bit about uh, where you're located, and if anybody um, wants to uh, find out more about you. Well, uh, if it's, we've been in Mexico. I've been in Mexico for quite a few years now. Uh, I was down here in Honduras for a couple of years, but I've made Mexico my base, and uh, we've, we've got these freshwater holes where we train and dive, and they're called cenotes. Mm. And, uh, there's thousands thousands of them in the region but uh, we have quite a few deep beautiful ones so all my diving is actually in fresh water so rarely do I get to the salt. Oh okay. So this is actually a bit of a treat for me seeing blue again. So yeah. where I dive is um, in uh, basically collapsed caves but fresh water. Okay. Super clear. You have to come that way. I would love to. The cenotes are amazing. If you want to you can train there's no wind there's no current no conditions no boats no jet skis. Oh. So all those things removed but some of the cenotes are actually quite dark. So for me doing deep diving in the ocean again I can't relax because it's too bright for me sure it sounds strange okay. I spent so many years in the cenotes trying to do a deep dive I have to actually have to block out my oh wow my okay because I just can't relax whereas in the cenotes some of them go deep enough they're actually pitch black um, that's kind of cool too though it is, it is really nice so we have oh. a nice nice line at the bottom of the line so you have this uh, you know when you're approaching the line light at the end like, yeah light at yeah. the end of the tunnel but then you turn around and go back yeah right light at the halfway yeah, point exactly Ah, cool, love that. And, and what exactly are you doing there? You're... I teach, yeah, I have a free diving school, free dive Tulum. Okay, so, yeah. Uh, you might have seen a few of those little stickers out there today. Yeah. Oh, these stickers have been terrible with marketing. Yeah. So, in fact, Luke Coley, one uh, of my boys. there's one. There we go. On his fins. There we go. Get the plug in. We are good. Beautiful. <laughs> there we go. Luke is here as well. What are you doing? Hey guys. I just one of our... Uh, Luke just wants to go up, wipe his face and <laughs> blow big boogers on the, while he's on the camera. <laughs> I mean, who doesn't, no, you know? We'll blow it out. Oh, awesome. <laughs> cool. Take a bit of cheek. Awesome. And you're you're heading back to uh, I'll, I'll, after this. Yeah, I'll be straight up back up to Mexico. So I've had a couple, been here for a few weeks, uh, three weeks, and so head up uh, day after tomorrow. So and straight back into work. So okay. I've got a few people to uh, running courses or coaching or photography, all sorts of things. I work with Luke. Yeah, uh, do right. a lot of photo work with Luke. So. And Luke is Luke runs uh, photography courses as well. Hey. He does a lot of photography courses. So he's not too bad. He's not too bad. No, he's, he's fantastic. Yeah, if I you mean, haven't checked out his Instagram yeah. uh, at Luke Coley, I don't give him uh, too much credit. You can hear me. So. <laughs> don't wanna, don't wanna expand that ego too much. Yeah, I can't criticize, but he's got a big head too. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, amazing! So precious, I've got a bit of a laugh now, so yeah. it's really good. Of course, yeah, no, so exactly. His last time. So we, Teddy should be getting on the line. Teddy should be coming up pretty quickly here. Um, yeah, and if anybody has any questions, checking once more. Looking like no. Luke, any questions? Yeah, Luke, any questions for us? No, he's already gone. Already back in the water. Yeah, he's been, both him and uh, Camilo have been working so hard chasing these athletes. I mean, for every one dive they do, they're doing two because they're diving down before the athletes to get shots of them coming down. And then they go up and cover quickly, go down to get them coming Actually, back up exactly. again. Exactly, it's, it's a lot of work, a lot of dives. And pushing those cameras up and down as well. So It's not easy. The cameras uh, create a lot of resistance, but they're also quite uh, slightly uh, positive in buoyancy. So yep. they have to push the, the camera down one handed while they're trying to equalize. So yeah. it is a specialized technique itself. Yeah. The same as the Spiros, you know, spear fishermen all exactly. pushing the gun down, leading with the gun. These guys have to look at the camera. Right. That's why you see massive duck dives on, on them sometimes because yeah. they're, they're pushing uh, pushing their camera down. It's yeah. a little bit harder. Yeah, totally. It's it's definitely something that takes a lot of practice and a lot of hard work. And yeah, I mean, at the end of an eight-day comp where they're doing it every single day, every single dive twice. Yeah, no, it's exhausting. Final stage, I'm just looking around. I was, I can't help myself. I've got to look at everything every time. I know. Just. It's the it's the the uh, risk manager in you. Yes. So uh, <laughs> didn't talk about why we moved, did we? You kept that kept that a wrap. Sorry. Did you talk about why we moved? No. Uh, I did, but yeah. Did. Do you want to say a little bit more about uh, the ghost line that we encountered? So where we are, we're in a, a half a bay. So with the wind, we're sitting closer. It's super deep, but we're sitting closer to one of the uh, the rock walls. And what's happened is an old mooring has sunk. They picked it up and dive eye. And just because we're sitting in it, we're sitting in a different position because of the wind. 
Um, Dive I picked it up, it was well away, but we wouldn't take any chances, so we just, we've got a fully adjustable system, so we actually just moved the entire system platform, the boats, and uh, competition platform into a, a deeper site and away from the line. Right, yeah, and again, with safety being the top priority for athletes, for everybody, uh, it was a no-brainer to take some time, even though, I mean, we're, we're kind of ready to be done with the comp, still taking that half an hour uh, to make sure we're safety, absolutely. safe is the number one priority. Unfortunately, uh, when it comes to these locations, uh, ghost ropes are an absolute, they, they give, scare the bejesus out of me. Yeah. So in the, the first days I was here, I was actually, uh, when we were training several weeks ago, we were sitting in this area and I was actually uh, running my paralens down every day. So I'd go home at night and just play the uh, paralens back at th for three hours of taping and uh, just looking for any anything in the, in the okay. lens itself. So sitting there and staring at blue screen for the three hours while it's you know. playing ah. on but. Uh, Looking for those things. We did locate a ghost rep. We uh, pulled it up, went down, secured it, pulled it up, and actually uh, removed it. Oh, nice. Okay. That was uh, about three weeks ago. Okay. So, unfortunately, in the ocean, it's one of those things, especially we got lots of boats around. Right. It's a good thing about right. Sanotes, we don't have ropes or the blue hole itself. Yeah, yeah. Just have the competition. yeah exactly. Teddy less, less chance of issues like that. Yeah. All right, Teddy off and racing. Teddy is on his way down. And the last boy, what a way to finish it. Yeah, 60 meter announced depth. This is a beautiful comp. Would only yeah. expect a beautiful dive, from, not to jinx it, would only expect a beautiful dive from Teddy. Yeah, of course. Yeah, no, it's been an absolutely amazing competition. Lots of beautiful dives. Uh, lots of ups and downs. And just playing with his, uh, bit of, doing his yeah, mouth fillers. Is he like a mouthful? Is he uh, no? Is he playing with his nose clip? Could be playing with nose clips. I know there have been a few issues with nose clips sort of moving off as you uh, are equalizing against it. Uh, pro tip: uh, wipe your nose completely with the inside of your wetsuit or with the line on your uh, nose clip uh, to get all the oils off so it doesn't slip around. Okay. Nice work, Teddy. Teddy's on his way up. Already. Up. Bobby, up. Looking nice and relaxed. Looking good. A nice amplitude of kicking in the legs. Teddy, up. Not much I movement in the Teddy. knees. You're using those big words again. Using them big words. Okay. You see a few of the divers wearing uh, the safety dive R fins. They're, mm -hmm. they're Australian uh, fin. Uh, yeah. I had those especially made for me uh, a few years ago. Okay. I've been looking for an opportunity to use them. Uh, quarantine sort of locked lock that away. Mm. Beautiful fins. Yeah. They're, uh, they're a carbon fin. They look very nice. Regina breaching up onto the boat. <laughs> Here's Teddy. Teddy's. Up nice and high. Coming up with a massive smile on his face. Beautiful. Beautiful recovery. That's how we like to finish the comp. That is exactly how we like to finish the comp. And we wait. We wait. The judges call. Give him a countdown's a bit of a sign that he's going to get a good one. Anybody you want to shout out to? Oh gosh, uh, oof. all my former students, anyone in Mexico, anyone coming to Mexico, um, lots of people. So uh, no, it's been beautiful. Thank you for all your hard work and the help. It's such a pleasure. And look forward to seeing you in Mexico. Yes, I will be there um, at some point shortly. I yeah, actually a few of the guys here will be heading up there. Nadav will see me up there next week. A couple of the uh, Taiwanese crew, uh, nice. Taipei crew will be heading up that way. So cool. Look forward to seeing them. Perfect. Party Love in Mexico. That. Awesome. Cool. Good diving. Cold beer and uh, good, good diving, tacos. Yeah. Good food. Great okay. food. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, looking forward to it for sure. I'll let you wrap it up. Thank cool. you very much, right. Brennan. Thanks, Chris. See you soon. All right. So that is a wrap for this competition. That is day eight, Constant Weight Men. Uh, that is the, that's it for the comp. 
Big shout out to Atmos, to Double K, to the Mayan Princess Resort, to the uh, Paradise Beach Hotel, all of our other sponsors. Huge thank you to all of your support. Make sure you're following Ada Freediving on Instagram. Make sure you're following me at Brandon Freediver on Instagram. Uh, all of our results will be posted coming up later on tonight and make sure you're following us for any of the behind the scenes stuff that we have for the rest of the night. That's me. I will see you guys in the water very soon. Have a good one. Bye. When we say paradise, what are we really talking about? A beach, a hotel, or the sun, or maybe the Caribbean? In case you don't know it already, Paradise Beach Hotel is a lot more than that. It's about a great food selection and exotic cocktails. It's dancing to the sounds of the night. And it's also waking up to the sounds of the morning. And suddenly realizing you've been a morning person all along. Because in paradise, you're free to be whoever you were born to be. And move the way you were meant to move. If it all sounds way too perfect, it's only because paradise usually is. You know that feeling you get when you go out and breathe your first outdoor breath? It's filled with that fuel only a garden surrounding environment can give you. And you see just how comfortable tropical paradise can really be. That's what paradise is all about. Spaces. Magic. Fun. Details. Most importantly, it's about feeling at home. In other words, come to paradise where it's all about you. Double K is a manufacturer of premium diving equipment in Korea, a vibrant and creative country. At Double K, we focus on constant research to develop innovative and comfortable products to enhance the experience of diving for our customers. We take pride in our cutting edge and stylish designs, providing a sleek yet professional look whether you're in or out of the water. From wetsuits to fins, masks to equalization tools, Double K has all the free diving accessories you will need. Fall in love with your diving with Double K. Inspired by the ocean. Location, speed, direction, altitude, 
atmosphere. Mission 2 is more than a watch. It follows you wherever you go. On the journey to ageless energy. We won't fear the unknown challenges. We won't hold back our curiosity. Your pulse, your tracks, your wake, the direction and achievement in your life. Distance and breath, merging with the ocean flow, our sweat cleansed in the currents. The world gets darker as we descend deeper, but your light will shine through the depth. A variety of color options. Each mission, too, embodies your personality. Thank <laughs> you. 